strike is interesting. Number 45 belongs to Andy Captain Moore, one of the most talked about and touted freshman linebackers in the country. In fact, the top defensive player in the country last year, according to USA Today. He selected number 45 to play here with his career with Ohio State. That's no big deal ordinarily. Problem is, Archie Griffin, the last great one to wear number 45, has brought about some interesting remarks from people saying, hey, 45 should not lay. Nobody should be allowed the opportunity to wear the number. Archie says it's okay with him, and he says it's okay with him, so he's going to wear number 45. And it's interesting, Tim and Randy, originally back in eighth grade, Andy preferred number 44, worn by the Boz, Brian Bosworth. Okay, we're about set to go. Ohio State won the toss and third to the second half, and so Rice will receive and defend the south goal. Andy Samp, a 6'1", 180-pound sophomore from Westchester, will kick off for the Buckeyes. And deep for the Rice Owls this afternoon, the center deep is Michael Perry, number eight. Randy, we're about ready to go, so we're going to see what Rice can do offensively right from the get-go. Sure, Ohio State wanted to defer, put their defense, their experienced part of their team on the field first, try and back Rice up. So another college football season is underway in Columbus, the 107th year for the Buckeyes. And this will be taken at the goal line by Michael Perry, straight up the middle to about the 20 where he's knocked down. So the Owls will go first and 10. This is the second time these teams have played here in uh, Ohio State. They played back in 1993. Michael Wiley in on the stop for Ohio State. Randy, what about Chad Nelson now? He's the junior quarterback. He can run, but passing is not his forte. Not his forte. He's an excellent runner. He can get the ball to the receivers if they're wide open. Last year, he had a lot of trouble doing that. Improved it a lot in the offseason. Michael Perry just ran back the kick. He's their key running back. Benji Woods the transfer fullback. Newhouse Bridges, you saw six pens, the veteran center. Jackson Beater, Corello, and Spinner for the right south. Here we go. This is the spread option offense. They called their backs at the top and bottom, the A back and the H back. And so now first down for the right south here just underway. And this is Nelson on the key for a couple of yards around the right end. And the Buckeyes will have to react, read and react perhaps, to where this ball is going to go. Let's take a look at Ohio State's defensive unit. Ten of them are back, okay? Great players. Mike Brabel, he's an All-American. Garnett, Fickle and Finkus, all Big Ten players, veteran players, all of you may be seen playing on Sunday afternoon at some point. These are our Wheaties lineup. Greg Belisari is the co-captain for the Ohio State Buckeyes, the veteran Ryan Miller, Andy Captain Moyer, Sean Springs. They say he can win the Jim Thorpe Award. He's the veteran, the star in the secondary. On second and seven for the right foul, Nelson will throw downfield. And this one is overthrown. He was only 6 of 26 a year ago, but they want to show the Buckeyes they may throw it early. And I think that's exactly what they wanted to do, Tim. Come out, throw the ball deep. Even though that ball went out of bounds, you want to run those corners off. Make them aware of that wide receiver because the corners are very important for Ohio State today to come up and force and tackle on that pitch back. If they get those defensive backs think and pass, that'll loosen them up a little bit, maybe give the running back a little more room. Right solves with the... Smallest enrollment in Division I football, only 2,600 students, but they're proud of their school and their team in their first year in the Western Athletic Conference. On third and seven now from the 23, this is Nelson to throw. And that one again is away, and Ohio State has held on the first series of down three and out for right. Works just like Ohio State wanted. Kick off with the defense on the field. Fourth right to punt. Now Ohio State looks to get very good field position with an All-American and a very dangerous return man back in Sean Springs. Well, Tucker Phillips is the punter for Rice. He was all Southwest Conference a year ago, seventh in the nation, averaging 43.6. And so he will kick it away to Sean Springs, back deep at his own 35-yard line. Just underway. Nice to have you with us from Columbus, Ohio. The center has been in and out. And against a bit of a breeze, Phillips does not have his best kick at all, and Ohio State will get it at the right 46-yard line, just 23 yards on the punt. We talked about Rice having to come out and try and not make a mistake, not turn the ball over. Ohio State successfully shut down that option on the first down, forced Rice to pass on second and third down. That's not Rice's game plan. I was surprised they didn't try and stick with that option a little bit more, feel them out. Now there's a lot of pressure on this Rice defense as Ohio State takes over in right circle. You know, Randy, what a break for Stanley Jackson to get his first series of starter in great field position. He doesn't have to worry about being backed up against his end zone. Gilman is in motion for the Buckeyes eye formation and give us to Pepe Pearson. He has running room to the 40-yard line and that's a game of six. I think what this 
saw there is what you're going to see a lot of early. That offensive line opening up holes found that right defense. Here are Weedy starting lineups for the Buckeyes. You saw Pearson Calhoun's the fill in at fullback. Tillman, Stanley, and Jones, the receivers. They're veterans. Pace, a marvelous offensive tackle. Murphy, Golston, Daniels, and Burris will join him on the interior line. On second down and four now for Ohio State at the right 40-yard line. Again, Tillman is in motion, one wide receiver. And the give again is to Pepe Pearson up the middle, and he's close to a first down. John Cooper says he expects Pearson to run for maybe 1,500 yards this year. And, Randy, that'd be pretty good considering in the last two years combined he's got half of that. Well, one thing, when you are an Ohio State tailback, he hasn't started. This is his first start. When he comes in there, you're expected to pick up where the last guy dropped off. All right, the Wheaties right defensive look here. Rashad Reynolds is the strong linebacker in there among that group. Warwick Franklin is an all whack perhaps, conference quarterback. And he's the veteran quarterback of a very young group. Now the give again is to Pepe Pearson, and he's got room around the end, knocks the man over, first down Ohio State, inside the 25 to perhaps the 24-yard line. The stop was made by Ludovius McCalla of Wright, and uh, Randy, as John Cooper said yesterday, we want Stanley Jackson not to run wild, we want him to do what we want him to do, do it within the system, and he's been able to do that so far. You're going to see a good block coming from the right side of your screen. Buster Tillman comes in, throws the block right there on Bedford, and that gives Pearson plenty of room to the outside, puts him one-on-one -on, -one on McCullough, the defensive back. Good tackle, but well down the field. First down, Ohio State at the right 24-yard line. Pepe Pearson is getting a lot of carries early on. He gets a couple in inside the 25. One thing the Ohio State coaches are very aware of, Wright likes to put a lot of pressure on the offense when you get down into the 20, 25 yard area. They like to come with blitzes, put a lot of men up at the line of scrimmage, take away both the running and the passing. 59 year old John Cooper in his ninth season at Ohio State, he has the best record in all the Big Ten the last three years at 37 and one. Just underway here, 12.09 to play first quarter. Rice and Ohio State, no score on this warm Saturday. Now it's second down for Ohio State. And the give for 10 is to Pepe Pearson inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. That'll bring up third down. Ohio State's running mostly between the tackles. That's where the strength of this offense is. That's where their experienced people are. So far, they're running right up the middle, mostly over Orlando Pace. You see the, the line open up the hole. Pearson gets the ball, lets the block, takes effect, and then runs through the open hole that's there. When you can get Pearson one-on-one -on, -one on a defensive back, you've done a great job as an offensive lineman. Jason Winship and Kevin Mosek were there to help out. Here's Orlando Pace from Sandusky, Ohio. Nearly went to Michigan. He decided there was room to play as a freshman at Ohio State, and that's why he chose the Buckeyes, and he's sure glad he did. Stanley Jackson's first pass is caught downfield. First down inside the five for Ohio State. And Buster Tillman was wide open on his first and goal. Warwick Franklin, the all-conference defensive back there to make the stop for right. So the drive has now gone 42 yards after the short punt. Take a look here from the end zone. You can see good protection so Jackson can drop back, let the route develop, does a nice job of throwing the ball low. He gets it right into Tillman's gut so there's no chance that ball gets tipped up. Nice job by Buster Tillman catching it, hanging on to it. First and goal, Ohio State at the four-yard line. Stanley Jackson has thrown one pass. This is Pepe Pearson who dives down to the two. Or a host of Rice Owls were there to make the stop. Rice has been in virtually every big game it has played in the Hatfield era, except for one blowout loss at LSU, 52 to seven. And they feel that if they could get better field goal kicking, Randy, they could hang in every one of these games. Well, I think they're an improved football team. Last year, only winning two games, going two, eight, and one. As you said, they were very, very close losses. One or two plays could have changed the outcome of that. Second and goal for Ohio State at the right two-yard line. Buckeyes in an eye formation for Stanley Jackson. This time the fake to Pearson, wide open in the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. John Lumpkin makes the catch, and that's the first touchdown of the year. John Lumpkin, the junior from Dayton, Ohio, and Ohio State is on the board. Nice call by Ohio State. Jackson, two for two in the drive. They go 46 yards, and Ohio State is on the board for a new season. Tim, you, you said it exactly. Great call, good play action, good fake by Jackson, and yet here's your tight end, wide open. Lumpkin does a nice job selling run. 
big confidence booster for Stanley Jackson to get a touchdown pass on your first drive of your first start. Go, Good call. John Jackson did not miss an extra point last year. He's in his third year for the Buckeyes, and this one is up, and the kick is good. There's timeout on the field. Ohio State 7 right nothing with 10-16 to go in the first quarter. So the Buckeyes offense with eight new players in different positions from a year ago does the job here on the first series of the game. We'll be back with a kickoff. Rice will get another chance in a moment. You're watching on Creative Sports. Tim Stow with Randy Wright and Jim Barber back here at Ohio Stadium in Columbus. Here's the touchdown again, Randy, and a good call and well executed. It is all set up by the running game. When you have a strong running game, you need to make right, play that first. Good job faking by Jackson. Comes up, throws a very high percentage pass. Pumpkin does a nice job of getting open. And when you're 6'7", 280 pounds, hard to cover all sides of you. He was wide open. So Ohio State on the board with 10-16 to play. There's the numbers on the scoring drive, and everybody can talk upstairs. I'm not sure there can be much criticism <laughs> for that opening drive. Well, it worked exactly like they drew it up. High percentage run, nice play. You get Pearson involved early. You let him get the flow of things, and yet you give Jackson some high percentage passes. Andy Stamp to kick off again for the Buckeyes. The sun peeking through the clouds today. This is a natural grass field. Prescription athletic server was put in here in 1991, and the footing is good on that field today. Once again, Michael Perry, this time of a 23-yard line, and that's where Rice will start again for some set. I think it's important here, Tim, that Rice doesn't abandon what they do best, and that's run the option. They have fallen behind early. They ran the option type of offense only one play last series. That's what they do best. That's what they're going to have to do is try and break some plays, and I think it's important they don't try and get out of that right away. Rice was 13th in the nation in rushing a year ago at 223 yards a game, but 103rd of 108 schools in passing. But now they have two wideouts deployed to the left here. And Chad Nelson, the quarterback, a transfer from Navy, gives it to Perry the other way. He breaks one tackle, and then the Buckeyes are there to ramp him up. Good defensive play, maybe a gain of two for Ohio State. The back field falls to make the stop. It looked like Tim, that play was going to develop into a bigger play. There's a good size hole. He's got two blockers in front of him, but Perry drew too far outside before he made his cut. And then you see Andy Kastenmoyer, the heralded freshman, come up there, make a nice stop. He's getting involved early. That's what they need out of any middle linebacker in a 4-3 defense. Andy Kastenmoyer from nearby Westerville, Ohio. His opening start today. They rearranged two other players to get him to start in his linebacker spot. Here's Nelson the pass. Being chased, and he's run out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Just no one to throw it to. Let's go down to Jim Barber on the sideline. Jim? Jim, it's interesting you guys are talking about the wishbone and the fact that Rice has tried to pass the ball on three occasions so far that particular time, a running play out of bounds. It turns out there was a time when Ken Hanfield coached at Arkansas in a game against Texas. His team didn't throw the ball at all. And they got a lot of criticism for that. Afterwards, he says, look, our quarterbacks were hurt. They couldn't raise their arms above their head. Therefore, we had to run the ball. But so far, it's been a little bit more than run-oriented little pass pass. Well, that's been the case so far. Ken Hatfield in his third year, he's in his 17th year as a head coach. He has a big winning record. He's 7-14 and one at right, but his team tied for the Southwest uh, Conference title two years ago. Nelson on the give through here to the fullback, and he gets a couple of yards, and that's about all. So it was the uh, middle of the Ohio State line here to stack him up, and that was Benji Wood, the transfer from Clemson. And once again, it is three and out. Luke Pickle there to make the big play for Ohio State defense. And they've lived up there to reputation so far, uh, Randy. A couple of three and outs, and Rice has got to kick deep from its own territory again. The Ohio State defense realizes they're going to have to carry the burden of this team until the offense, the inexperienced players on offense, gain that experience that can perform up to the level that's expected of them. Two drives, six plays, doing a great job. Parker Phillips uh, not happy. With Brings it back to the 47-yard line. Great field position again for Ohio State before Kevin Mosek brought him down. Timeout on the field, 8.33 to play. So far, it has been all Ohio State.
Ohio State seven rush nothing here in Columbus the Buckeye second series great field position inside the right 50 yard line little swing pass inside of Pepe Kirsten the block set up he gets around one man 40 35 30 he may go 20 15 and out of bounds beautiful call by the Buckeyes to Pepe Kirsten absolutely Tim great call works the same way as the draw the same way as the delayed run it's a very high percentage pass you get your lineman in front of you Jackson did a nice job executing that, waiting till the lineman came into him, then just dipped it right over. And uh, their star defensive end, Andy Clifton, is injured on this play. You can see him going in after the quarterback here, and then he just twists his ankle. And then now it's all Pepe Pearson. Pearson does a great job. He's a little smaller, but much quicker than an Eddie George. So he can get to the outside and make some big plays when he gets there. Nice job setting that up, taking it to the sideline where the open field was. Great call on first down. 35 yards on that play. Andy Clifton, he's one of the star defensive ends on this Rice team. They're counting on him this season. Junior from Cleburne, Texas. Not the biggest kid at 6'2", 240, but a very good player. Boy, what a great start for both Jackson and Pearson. Pearson, six carries, 30 yards. He's caught a pass now. And Stanley Jackson, three out of three for 51 yards. So, uh, hey, uh, the coaches were hoping you'd get up to a good start. He's done that. But, hey, how about field position, too, right? Well, when you take over on the positive side of the field, the plus 50, you can open up your offense. You can do a lot more things. And even though Ohio State hasn't had to do that, they're really letting their offensive line control the defensive line of rights, and they can pretty much do whatever they want. They haven't had to explode or to take things out of the closet but yet they will, and I think as the game goes on, they'll be able to do that. Well, you know, this is Rice's first year in the Western Athletic Conference as we have a stoppage in play, but they're proud of their school at Rice. Only one out of four kids who uh, uh, try to enroll in that school uh, get a, gets accepted. They graduate 76% of their football players, and that's the eighth best in the nation. Rice was named after William Marsh Rice, a Houston area businessman who made the bulk of his fortune after the Civil War. He died in 1900 at the age of 83, and the school was founded in 1912 with a very proud academic tradition. All right, for Ohio State, now first and 10. The ball is at the right 13-yard line. Clifton is out of there. Here's Pepe Pearson off left tackle on any. He just got an incredible block from Pace and gets inside the 10-yard line. No surprise running over Orlando Pace right there. That's where most of these running plays have been. Again, Ohio State, nothing fancy. Watch this offensive line play. And look at the hole. Look at Pace. Just open up that hole. Guard comes around, and Pearson hits it much quicker. He's a smaller back, as I just said. He's only 5'10", 205 pounds. But he sure hits that hole quick, and he's durable. He can take those kinds of hits, take that kind of pounding inside the line of scrimmage. And the 5'9", nose guard Larry Thompson had to come in from the uh, secondary to make the stop. Now on second and five for Ohio State at the eight-yard line. Once again, here's Pepe Pearson. It'll be touchdown on. Buckeyes are rolling in the first quarter of their opening game today. Here at Just like we were told yesterday by the Rice coaches, when you load up because you think they're going to Orlando Pace, they've got enough ability and talent to go to the other side. They go right by him with John Daniels and Brooks Burris. What a hole. Take a look. It'll be coming right at you here. You can see LaShawn Daniels pull, open up, make that block. There's nobody there for Pearson to run into beautiful hole beautiful hole it's the way it's diagrammed and so now the Buckeyes are on the board again Go, Go. this will be Jock Jackson here for the extra point for Ohio State and the kick is up and gone the Buckeyes have had their way in the early going from Columbus with 735 to play in the first quarter Ohio State 14 right nothing the Owls have got to regroup to get back in this game we'll be back with a kickoff in a moment okay Mike thank you Tim Stout and Randy Wright and Jim Barber at the Horseshoe 92,000 here today John Cooper's team is rolling along in fact here are your Amico Big Ten leaders Amico you expect more from a leader which we'll show you in just a moment as you look at the numbers on the scoring drive for the Ohio State Buckeyes and Pepe Pearson is now on the board John Cooper has been very successful here at Ohio State. Looks we'll like the kickoff here, and once again, Andy Stamp for Ohio State will go at it. And Michael Perry's getting used to this one, and this one is into the end zone, and he will down it right there. So Rice again will have to start his third series 
back in its own territory at its 20 yard line now let's take a look at those amico big 10 leaders okay and as i say you expect more from a leader and they know in the uh, decade of the 90s as michael perry trots off the field john cooper has more big 10 wins than any other coach in the league impressively too uh, randy how hayden fry at 27 of course paterno hasn't been in there in the big 10 all that time but nonetheless cooper's got more wins and you look at bill mallory there fourth with 19 indiana i don't think got any last year in it's going to be tough for them maybe to get a couple this year. So it shows you the success John Cooper has had here at Ohio State just in the 90s. He's a class act, a nice guy, a wonderful guy to deal with, and very pleasant. And he's 59. He says, I'd like to coach here uh, all the way through the rest of my career. He enjoys it. This time, the fullback, Benji Wood, gets a good hole up the middle, and there's the first big play offensively out to the 37-yard line, 17 yards on the transfer. Benji Wood, Damon Moore made the stop for the Buckeyes. Jim, that is what Rice needs to do to make the option work. The fullback has got to be a major player in that. This is only the second time they've given the ball to the fullback. But Ohio State feels to stop Rice's option. You take the fullback away, number one. You take the quarterback away, number two. And then the pitchback. That time, number one option, the fullback, made a big play out of it. So it's first down, Rice. Their first first down of the afternoon here in Columbus. Man in motion again. Benji Woods takes it through the middle. This one gets up over the 40-yard line. That's where Luke Fickle wraps him up and brings him down. Woods, an interesting story. He was uh, recruited by the coaches at Rice when they were all at Clemson. He was in Atlanta, okay, an Atlanta high school player, and things didn't work out, so he stayed in touch with the Rice coaches, and he ended up transferring to Rice, and now he's one of the players they're counting on. And he's a surprise starter today. Danny Whitlock had been listed as a starting fullback. fullback. Wood had to step up, and Whitlock got hurt. Here you see the fullback come through. He reads the same thing the quarterback reads. Takes the ball with the holes there. Second and seven right at the right 40. Nelson a couple of fakes. Now he's going to throw downfield. He's got a man wide open and just could not quite reach him. That play was very close to working. And that's a shameful right because Byron Godfrey was right there. Matt Fink has put the pressure on there. That was close to a big play for the Owls who still have not completed a pass, but that's the closest they've come. What a very well-designed play. They've got Ohio State thinking fullback now. They fake a counter. Nelson stepped up under pressure, but as we said in our opening statement, Tim, the option offense will have receivers open downfield. It's more a question whether a quarterback that's not used to throwing the ball and is taking a pounding all day can get them that ball. That time, he didn't do it. Third and seven for the Owls now at their own 40-yard line. Ohio State was 6 10 up on the line. Nelson to sprint out. He's got some options here, cuts it upfield. He has great speed. And at the 50, he has a first down. And that was the good speed and running ability of Chad Nelson, a transfer out of Navy, who made his big play right there. An excellent run-pass option by Nelson. You can see the running back, Spencer George, number 24, pull out in front of Nelson. This is just like a sweep. Great block on Captain Moyer. That frees Nelson. So even though that was designed to be a pass first, run second, when you got a lead back blocking in front, it works the same as a sweep. And Nelson's an excellent runner. All right, right with its second first down. Greg Bellisseri made the stop for Ohio State, bumped into the turf. So the Owls have it at midfield. Here's the the running back yours and he's going to be kind of stopped at the line of scrimmage and then pushed back ohio state spelled it out that time spencer george gets knocked down and ryan miller led the way for ohio state when, one thing with ohio state they are so aware of outside pursuit and outside plays by right they're flying to the outside and you're not going to have a lot of success you see ty howard come up there you see miller in there for the tackle you see rob kelly the safety two defensive backs involved on that tackle in the backfield, those safeties are not thinking pass. They're thinking come up and support on the run. Okay, good look at the Buckeyes here, as you see. Number 43, Ryan Miller now at the loss of a yard, second and 11 for right at the L 49-yard line. There's the spread option look that the Rice offense gives. Nelson's going to sprint left, cut it upfield, and there's just no place to go. And he is lucky to get back for half close to the line of scrimmage. Ohio State adjusting on these last two plays. Good play by Mike Brable, the senior from Akron. Tim, it's hard to cut back on the option because you don't block the back side. As you can see, Nelson trying to cut back. Nobody on the back side is blocked because those linemen think the ball is either going to the fullback or around the corner. So when you cut back, you got to expect to get hit if you're a quarterback. And you can see the big size in there of Mike Brable, all Big Ten, all American. 
and a great leader on this Ohio State defense. So here's a third down now at about 11 for the Owls at their own 48-yard line. Two men deployed wide, right, and left. Nelson to pitch it out. He's got his man, but it'll be a, he's short of a first down at the Ohio State 47. Spencer George carried Ty Howard there to make the stop for Ohio State. Let's go now to Mike Gleason in our Big Ten studio. Mike. All right, Jim, George attacking North Carolina State. Uh, well, the Wolfpack uh, gets out to an early lead. 40 yards on his option to the left side. Hassan jumps it. Dean cuts back, reverses his field. He's gone 40 yards for the touchdown. It's 7 nothing North Carolina State in the first. Let's go back to Columbus, Ohio with Tim and Randy. Now the right out to punt for the third time this afternoon. But this time they should get some decent field position. But once again, the punt is terrible by Tucker Phillips. The All-Southwest Conference punt, you have to believe this guy was number seven in the nation a year ago, and two of his three punts have been very, very poor. That one's about five yards, and that's all. Tim, just when you think the Rice offense, even though they didn't get any points out of it, they move the ball, they give their defense a rest. Now you need one of the best and most productive players on your team to do something good. Phillips just thanks it right off of his foot, goes right out of bounds. And you put your defense, even though they're on the Ohio State side of the field, a golden opportunity to get some field position in their favor when taking advantage of it. Well, that didn't leave Ken Hatfield very happy, as you might imagine. Rice needs, as uh, Randy said, to use all of the weapons it has effectively, and their punting game hasn't done it. Now, here's the fullback on a give around the left side, and that's into Rice territory one more time. Good run in there by Matt Keller, the fullback. Nicky Sualua would have come back, but he academically has some problems, so uh, Keller gets the call, and Ladupius Matala makes the stop. I kind of uh, intrigued by Ladupius Matala, Randy. He was Ladupius Shaw last season, and then over the offseason, he decided that he didn't like Shaw, so now he's Matala. I, I got to speak, I think, on behalf of all the broadcasters. If you're going to change one of those names, have it be Ladupius. Don't yeah. change Shaw. Yeah, he changed, uh, they changed his last name, so he's now Ladupius Matala. Stanley Jackson the pass, and there's his first incompletion of the day. And that one might have been a little bit rushed. He was looking to get to his uh, tight end, Bob Hauser, and it just was a little bit low. I think he hit it right on the head there. That was a little rushed. He didn't have to get rid of the ball that quickly. All he needed to do was get the ball out in front of Hauser and give him room to run with it. Jim Barber's on a sideline. Could you have caught that pass, Jim? <laughs> I think so, Jim, but uh, not against the... Not against some of the defenders. Stan Jackson having the kind of game that John Cooper had hoped for. Following up something you guys said earlier, he said freedom is not his thing. He wants to play within our thing, and if he doesn't, he'll sit on the bench on his thing. You got that, Tim? Yeah, I do, and he's after that good start with 51 yards. There's a man downfield. He's got him out of bounds first down, Ohio State. And an excellent play and a good pass on the run by Stanley Jackson to Buster Tillman, and that's a first down for Ohio State. Carlin Bedford was there to make the stop, and it's another first down for the Buckeyes. He looks good here with this pass, Randy. Now, this is what he does best. When things break down, as you see Stanley in the backfield, Jackson, a very good athlete, very talented, can make plays happen when things don't follow the script. Busted plays, he scrambles out there, finds Stillman, throws him a bullet right where he needs to. Stanley Jackson from Patterson, New Jersey, said it's been his lifelong dream to be a starting quarterback at Ohio State. This is his first start. He realized that dream today. Pearson, stop momentarily, then gets inside the 30. Good run for Pepe Pearson in his first game as a starter this afternoon. Larry Ruffin made the stop. So the Buckeyes now will uh, move to second down here when they place the ball at the 26-yard line. There's John Lumpkin who caught the first touchdown pass of the day. You know, John Cooper says we don't have the fly pattern threat that we've had of other years, but he likes six receivers, including two freshmen. He says, no, they can't gang up on any of these guys because they're all of good ability. Second down and six Buckeyes. Here's Pepe Pearson, beat the block. Gets another one, and he just powers down to the 22-yard line, short of a first down. And then that's again where Carlin Bedford came in to make the stop for the Owls, whose defense has been on the field a long time in this first quarter with 2.31 to go. And that's, that's one thing that you're going to see take effect as the game goes down. Here, Pearson trying to go outside, sees the inside pressure, cuts it to the outside, and sees the hole open up right there and turns what really should have been a stop in the backfield by Rice to a big game for Ohio State. Third and two for the Buckeyes now as Stanley Jackson points out the defense. And the give is to Pepe Pearson. He has the first down and he may have a lot more. Touchdown Ohio State. That's two touchdowns. 
touchdowns for Pearson today, and the Buckeyes have their third touchdown in the first quarter, and they have been picture perfect on offense so far here today. The offensive line doing a great job, not only giving the backs the line of scrimmage, but well into the secondary. That's the second time Pearson has, has taken the ball and has gone untouched. You see great blocking up front, good blocking by the backs and the tight end to seal those defensive backs, and then there's nobody on the outside. Pearson sees that, breaks to the outside, and with his speed, right to secondary, can't catch him. All right, here is Josh Jackson now on for Ohio State to try to make a three in a row, and this one's quickly getting out of hand here in Columbus. And the Buckeyes with three uh, drives of less than 55 yards have capitalized each and every time. Stanley Jackson's off to a great start at quarterback. The Rice Owls have had no field position, which has hurt them dramatically here in this opening game of the 1996 season. Randy, take another look at this. You can see Latan Daniels again pulling out, doing a nice job of blocking downfield. And you see Tillman again, the wide receiver in there, stealing off those defensive backs, and that gives Pearson plenty of room. Great job blocking. I don't think, Tim, you can have big running plays without downfield blocking by your wideout. We see twice today Tillman throwing excellent blocks to spring the runner, but running back. Well, John Cooper was concerned about how his offense would play after having so many star players, but that guy... 75 can make the plays on the line. He's done a marvelous job for Orlando Pace. And so now the Buckeyes have a 21 to nothing lead with two minutes remaining to be played here in the first quarter. Orlando Pace may end up in three positions. Besides offensive tackle, they could use him in short yardage on defense. They may play him at fullback as a blocker. He's that versatile. I don't think we'll see him do that today, but as the season goes on, that's one of the things they're talking about and kind of excited about doing. Andy Stamp with his fourth kickoff of the afternoon and he, uh, he's just getting stronger and more fired up and again Rice will have to start offensively from its own 20 yard line now the game plan for Rice Randy gets a little dicey here of course they don't want to get blown out of the game here beyond what they already are they got I guess just figure out a way to move the football as well as they can and use some clock exactly because they need to settle down just take a deep breath some of these pregame jitters and first game jitters should be over now and they need to do what they do best which is run the option give the ball to your fullback let your quarterback run it they need to take some time off the clock they need to give that defense a rest because it's been out there a long time Chad Nelson brings his team up right with just two first downs so far in his first quarter this is their fourth series all of them back around their 20-yard line. Nelson is still the quarterback. They may use a couple of quarterbacks in here today. And Nelson keeps up the middle for a gain of five. Second and five for the Owls. Nice play by Nelson to read the fullback, pull the ball out, hesitate while Ohio State runs outside to take away the pitchback, and yet he still picks up five or six. Were they in motion here, you know? You can do that if you don't make a, an effort towards the line of scrimmage. Gingrich was definitely moving, but you can do that going backwards. So he was lateral or backwards. Damon Moore made the stop for the Buckeyes, second and five. Theoretically, Ohio State would like to learn its game real clearly here today and against Pittsburgh and then get ready to go to Notre Dame. That brings up some interesting points we'll talk about as this game goes on. So now for the Owl, second down and five at the 25. Nelson will pick back to George. He gets one block, but boy, look where Sean Springs is to make the stop for a gain of three. He comes up from the corner to cover so quickly. They think this kid could be a Jim Thorpe Award candidate, and only one other Big Ten player has ever won that award as the top defensive back in the country. Good play by Nelson reading that, but Watt Springs come up here, faces him up, wraps his arms around it and drives him right out of bounds. If you're a high school player and you want to learn how to tackle, watch John Springs on that play. Picture perfect to make a training film out of that. So it's a third down now, third and two for the Owls at their own 28-yard line. Buckeyes are obviously looking for the run here, and Benji Wood is not going to get it. They were looking for the run. The fullback got it. He was stuffed at the line of scrimmage. And now for the fourth time in the first quarter, the Rice Owls are going to have to punt. What a nice job by Ohio State defense. It looked as though Wood was going to have enough room to get that first down. He only needed two yards. Look at the hole open up. But Belisari just sticks him right in his shoulder pad and drives him backwards. Belisari, not that big, only 230 pounds. 
But what a nice play, what a nice tackle to keep Rice from getting that first down. He was nearly in tears last night on a TV show talking about what it meant to him to be named the co-captain of the Buckeyes. He's a Florida kid, but he's a Buckeye through and through on this football team. A veteran player who can make plays, and he made a big one right there. He's a co-captain with Juan Porter, who's the injured center on offense. Now here's the punter again. This time he gets off the punt. And we're used to seeing from the right south and the Buckeyes this time will have to start deep in their own territory. So that time, the right to punter Tucker Phillips put a good boot into that ball, knocks it all the way down to the Ohio State nine-yard line, 62 yards on the punt by Tucker Phillips. And even though Rice didn't score, at least the Owls finally forced the Buckeyes back at their own end. And one of the problems Rice's defense has had is not only stopping Ohio State's offense, but making them score on long drives. Their last two touchdowns have come on a two-play drive and a four-play drive. They need to keep them at least run time off the clock and not let them score quickly, if at all. John Cooper undefeated in opening games at Ohio State. Now the Buckeyes are going to change quarterbacks here. Not because of anything Stanley Jackson has done. It's been almost perfect. Joe Germain comes in. These two guys were very close in practice. Germain is a junior college transfer from Mesa, Arizona. He doesn't get the luxury of the field position. But he's got some new running backs in there as well. And the give this time is off the left side to Germain Jackson. His first carry of the day, and he gets out to the 15. That's the end of our first quarter from Columbus. It's been all Ohio State, 21 to nothing over the right south. We're back at the Ohio Stadium in just a moment. Since now with Randy Wright here in Ohio Stadium, the Buckeyes have been just about picture perfect here. They lead right 21 nothing. They've scored all three times they've had the ball. And now, Randy, it's obvious John Cooper wants to use this time to get some other players a chance to, get, you know, uh, get some game time, action, quality time, if you will, and that includes the new quarterback here, Joe Germain. And as you said, quality time. Get him in there, even though it's 21 nothing. Let him play in the first quarter, start of the second quarter. Second and four for the Buckeyes. Lumpkin it is in motion here. And then the give is back to the other way. And Germain, and he has another good run out to the 21-yard line. Good run by Germain Jackson. Ken Hatfield. The, Air Force, the uh, coach at Air Force at one time, now at Rice, and he's hoping for good things to come. First of all, win the game, but as soon as we get a game, as soon as we feel like we get a game under control, we're going to substitute. We're going to substitute freely and play as many football players. You know, I tell our players that if you work hard during the week, you're going to play on Saturday. If you know you're going to play on Saturday, you're going to work that much harder next week. And if you work hard, good things happen to you. It's obviously the message that Coop had for his guys, and they've all worked hard, and they're all getting the chances he said to play here so far. And the running back again off the right side for three more yards here. And that's Jermon Jackson, and he gets out to the 23-yard line. Back Keller, excuse me. So Keller gets to the 23. So the Buckeyes now being a little more cautious, Randy, perhaps not at this end of the field. And they really like this Matt Keller at fullback. He's a small back, six foot, 210 pounds is all, but he's got great hands and great speed. They tried him in the spring at tailback and fullback, so he shows he's got the speed to play tailback. They settled on him at fullback. He's just a freshman eligibility. They expect big things from him throughout his career. Second and seven of the 23. Watch Orlando Pace at the bottom of the screen. Here's the blitz draw. That pass is complete, and then it's dropped a ball at incomplete. And rarely does Demetrius Stanley drop a ball, but he did there. Jermaine delivered it beautifully, too. That was a nice pass. He read the coverage, threw the ball on time. But McCullough makes a nice play. Sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. He does a nice job of reading. You see, one-on-one, -on -one, no help as Rice was blitzing. He reads the, the route. Flips a little, but comes up and good hit. Brings his arms up high. When you tackle those receivers, you've got to tackle and wrap. We saw Sean Springs do that for Ohio State. Now we saw McCullough do it with his positive result. Now Rice with a chance to stop the Buckeyes and make a punt on third and seven. Remain to throw out on the flat, and that's incomplete. And so the Buckeyes will be forced into their first punting situation of the afternoon. Let's go right away to our Big Ten studio and Mike Leeson. Mike. All right, Tim, Georgia Tech, North Carolina State, Yellow Jacket quarterback Joe Hamilton passes his first college touchdown. T.J. Williams does most of the work, but hey, Hamilton will take it nonetheless. Tech's on the board, but North Carolina State still leads 10-7. Now let's go back to Tim. So the Buckeyes' Brent Bartholomew, who's in his third season and started punting very well at the end of last year now, will stand back at his own 10-yard line. And uh, he gets a good, booming, high spiral back to Michael Perry, who will take it at his own 27 and look for some help. 
There's one block, 32-35, but there's just too many Buckeyes there. A good kick by Brent Bartholomew and a good return, and it was Kevin Hauser in on the stop for Ohio State. 13.32 to play here in the first half. We'll have Ohio State President Gordon Gee visit with us about the state of college athlete, uh, athletics and other affairs at halftime. We'll have uh, Mike Gleason in our Big Ten studio keeping up on all the scores and highlights and other pieces. John Cooper uh, loves it here in Columbus with the Ohio State Buckeyes. His team actually coming in today with a two-game losing streak after that great 11-0 start a year ago. And then his team lost at Michigan and lost to Tennessee in the Citrus Bowl, but it's a new year here. And Ohio State off to a good start, 21 and up. And first down, right at the 35, Nelson. Left, and there's just too many Ohio State Buckeyes for him to make a move. Andy Katzenmoyer, the freshman, made a great big-time move right there. Played off a block, Randy, and gets a stop. And as a quarterback, when you pull out like that on the play as you watch this, he's got a guard pulling right in front of him. Torello, he needs to stop and pull up. The guard blocking the defensive man the same place Nelson is running to. So you, I think you got to give that sack to Nelson. That kind of play. Pull up, let the guard block that defensive back out of the way, and then cut up behind him. Jim Barber said earlier he's wearing our Archie Griffin's number 45. No one else uh, as a Buckeye has worn it since those great years in the mid-70s. Here's Benji Wood who pounds off one blocker and then gets it out to about the 33-yard line. Once again, let's check with Mike Leeson in our Big Ten studio. Okay, Jim, Michigan State at Nebraska. On the 37, Mike Fullman fields the Michigan State punt. And look out, he takes it up to the sidelines to get the wall, and then he simply outraces all of the Spartans. He stumbles and tumbles, but good job of uh, retaining his balance. He goes 63 yards for the touchdown. Number one, Nebraska, moves ahead 17 zip. Ohio State here now, defensively, it's third down, 11 yards to go for the right fouls. They have to decide, they're gonna try to put it in the air and get on the ground. Nelson will throw, and he's dancing and looking around, and there's no place to go there at all. And the Buckeyes looked up, the Fickle did just a terrific job. You know, it's so hard for them, Randy, even when it's an obvious pass situation, they don't do it very well in the first place. And you got those tough defensive guys chasing you. The, the numbers, the odds aren't good. One thing, when you look at Ohio State's defensive line, they're awful tough to block anyway. But when you are an option team, you don't recruit or train your linemen to pass block very much. So when you have to pass block, that much more difficult. You talk a lot about the receivers and the quarterback in the passing game. You don't often talk about the offensive linemen, but that's where it all starts. So Tucker Phillips for a six punt today, and it's going to come back, and it's going to be roughing the kicker. Sean Springs for the Buckeyes. He, he can almost stop here and just hope he doesn't get hurt because this one's coming back. So there's a break coming up for the right foul. 11-17 to play here in the first half. Ohio State 21 right nothing. Take a look again. Ohio State working on some special teams, coming after it, and it looked as though Rob Kelly had the right angle, number 34 there. He had the right angle to make the block, but he got knocked into the punter by his own man there. So good effort by Ohio State. Got to be a little smarter, and sometimes those things happen, and Kelly's going to get called for the penalty, and I don't think that was really his fault. Mike Furry was the man who was just a little bit out of control. 15 yards, first down. Those gals will take them any way they can get them at this point. And Phillips, uh, I don't know, did he get beat up over there? He looks all right. He's been busy with his five punts today. That'll bring the ball all the way out now to the right 42-yard line where the Owls will have it first and 10. If you're right, you just need to try and execute. You're down 21 to nothing, 11 minutes, a little over left in the first half. They really have done some things a little better the last two drives they've had the ball. They need to make sure that they understand what they want to accomplish out of this game and just get some execution and don't play sloppy football. Chad Nelson's still the quarterback here for the Owls, so it's first and 10 now for Rice. Full house backfield or the spread option. That's the H back in motion, and Nelson once again is just hammered from behind. I'd say Ohio State has more guys that swarm the ball. That's Clinton Wayne in there on top. Ball back at the 40, make it second out. You know one thing, Randy, about continuity, Ohio State's had three coaches in 30 years. Rice has had nine coaches in 30 years, and all nine of those have had losing records. So obviously they'd love to get Hatfield there, keep him there, make him happy, and let everybody know that could be a Rice off football player, that that's their coach for a long time, Ken Hatfield. And one of the reasons they've had nine coaches is because they have all had losing seasons. <laughs> 
second down and 12. The ball for the Bryce Dallas at the 40-yard line. Nelson straight back to pass, and now with nobody there, he has the speed. He might get away from a couple of these guys, and it is indeed a good one for Nelson before, and there's a penalty flag down. They may get a face mask on that, but an excellent run by Chad Nelson. Good play that time by Nelson. He is more of a running back than a quarterback, and when he touched that ball and he takes off running, instinctively he knows what to do pretty good protection to begin with he steps up like he should sees nobody open and then he becomes a running back and breaks some tackles you see miller right there missing a tackle he's a pretty good tackler Belisari there grabbing him high i think you're right that's where we're going to see the penalty come in nice play by nelson that time now is this inadvertent or is this going to be flagrant and it's going to be flagrant they're going to give him 15 yards on that call which rarely randy you see anymore if even it's in doubt they give him five but that's 15 yards what they try and look at is if you grab the face mask and turn the head then it's a flagrant if you just grab the face mask and let it go and the head doesn't turn then it's the five yard one that was very obvious to me i think that he grabbed it and didn't let go turns the head and nelson fortunately didn't get hurt so now the right south with their deepest penetration into ohio state territory this afternoon at the buckeye 34 first down this would be a big emotional lift if they could get into the end zone here and the gift of the running back off the left side, and that just doesn't go very far from Michael Perry, who has really been bottled up so far today. Pickle again on the stop for Ohio State. After the first couple of plays where Rice tried to stretch that Ohio State defense by throwing the ball, they have, Ohio State defense has come inside, starting to take that running game away in these misdirection plays that Rice had had an effort to try and run earlier they're not working right now and ohio state feeling that they can cover one-on-one -on -one with their cornerbacks are bringing their safeties close to the line of scrimmage to get involved with the running game michael perry averaged seven yards a carry last fall even though he only gained 282 yards but they like him and that's a pretty good number now nelson to pass downfield on man coverage here but this one is out of bounds and incomplete That'll keep the down box moving around the third down and 10. And again, the ball is at the 34-yard line. Jim Barber's on our sideline. Jimmy, what do you got for us? Jim, the preparation that Ohio State had for Rice in the wishbone, you might think it was months simply because there was that off time from last season to this. In fact, John Cooper said yesterday they just started putting in the defensive scheme against the wishbone last Friday. And they'll be able to get the bone out of their minds after this game because they have two more weeks until they play Pittsburgh, Jim. The right Owls, uh, you know, Randy, they were uh, lightning out of practice on Tuesday. Had a terrible lightning storm had to quit early. So that disrupted things a little bit this week. And they have no week off next week. They go to Colleen for their next game next Saturday. All right, on third down, here's Nelson. And he's running out of room. And there's just nowhere to go for his uh, back, Michael Perry. And he's tossed out of bounds. So after that penalty, the Buckeyes make a good play. And Miller is there. And that's going to make it fourth down now for the right foul. Great job that time by John Day, a defensive end who's giving Matt Pinkus a spell there. He made that option play. He stretched it out so that Nelson couldn't cut up. And when you're going to the short side of the field, they were on the left hash mark, going to the left side, and your defensive end stretches that out. You run out of room, and when the pitch is finally made, there's no place for the back to go. Well, Wright is going to try a 52-yard field goal, okay, from Scott Grimes, a freshman kicker from Dallas. They say this kid's got a tremendous leg. We'll see. It won't be this time, though. He's got it a little low and wide to the left, and so that's where the ball will come back out, and Ohio State will take over. Time out on the field, 9.14 to play. First half, it's Ohio State 21 right up, and we're coming back in just a moment. Well, speak sometimes can be hard to come by at Ohio Stadium, and uh, he might be just happy to be just here in the ballpark somewhere today. And uh, <laughs> I don't know who he's going to be guarding against up there, but if anybody attacks, he's there to guard them. <laughs> he's got the, uh, the bird's eye view, you would say. And what a view of Ohio Stadium, 75th season. They've been playing football for 107 years here. Another full house of 92 or 3,000. All the home games are sold out this year. And the big one's coming up at the bitter end with Michigan. They get Notre Dame on the road in a couple of weeks. All right, let's check the Ohio State quarterback. Joe Germain is back in there. Now for his second series, he hasn't had the success that Stanley Jackson's had. But on first down, he has a man downfield, and it's incomplete. That wasn't a bad pass either. 
Uh, but it was dropped in there by D. Miller, who's in the game. And I'll tell you what, Ohio State's played a lot of players here, Randy, so far in the first half. They had that was their game plan going in to get an early lead, give their offense, some of their inexperienced players, a chance to get into the rhythm, but yet play some of their backups. This Joe Germain, he mentioned earlier, he's a transfer. He's got three years of eligibility to go. Much more of a pocket passer. He didn't start until the midway through his junior season in high school, so he's a late developer. They really like his progress and think he's going to be competitive along with Stanley Jackson for the next couple of years. And they lost one of their quarterbacks to injury, so they've taken Tom Hoyne, Bobby's brother, moved him back from end to quarterback to give him a third string quarterback so that they have enough depth there. And on second down, that's uh, Matt Keller, the fullback, gets it out over the 35-yard line. And that'll bring up third down now for the Buckeyes. They scored on all three series that Stanley Jackson was a quarterback, and this is the second series for Joe Germain, and he has a third and seven to keep the drive alive. And when Jackson was in there, it should be noted also they had outstanding field position. The two drives that Germain has been in there, not near the field position that they had early. All right, conventional pro set here, two wide out for Joe Germain. He's going to go straight back. For the Buckeyes down the field, D.J. Jones was right there. D.J. Jones with a marvelous catch downfield. This is a guy that's coming back from open heart surgery. What, what a story he is. He started in 1994. Take a look at the play. First of all, as Jermaine goes back, plenty of protection, lets the play develop, then throws a perfect strike right down the field. You see, nice job by Jones catching the ball, tucking it away right away before he takes the hit. D.J. Jones, we were talking about, Kim, started all of 94, missed 95 with open heart surgery, is back to start this year. Who takes the place? Ricky Dudley, becomes the first round NFL draft coach. Absolutely. Jermaine now one for four, now two for five. Good move inside, and the pass is complete down inside the 25-yard line to D. Miller. So Jermaine hasn't hit them all, but he's thrown some good passes. The last one, 26 yards, this one inside the 25-yard line. At the 25, they mark it. And I've been impressed with Jermaine back there. D. Miller here as your wideout. He didn't start, but he's one that they expect to have in there consistently. Jermaine coming off the bench. You take a three-step drop when, when Rice blitzes like they did. You got to expect to get hit as a quarterback. Nice job standing in there delivering the ball, knowing you were going to get hit. First and 10 Buckeyes at the right 25-yard line. Jermaine on the give through the middle here to Pepe Pearson. And he just did get hauled down at the 15. One more step, and he might have gone. Well, it's easy to run through big holes. And take a look at this hole coming at it. Beautiful job by the offensive lineman. Pearson's a good eight, nine yards down the field before contact is even made. Yeah. Nice job. Once again, left side, Orlando Pace. He's going to pile up some huge yardage. Pearson already 12 carries, 81 yards for Ohio State. And we still have 6.57 to play here in the first half. Second and one for the Buckeyes. Eye formation for quarterback Joe Germain. And he will keep for the first down for Ohio State. See Jermaine there just following behind the offensive line, picking it up on a second and short with a big back. Ohio State has another option. Let the quarterback keep it there. You see behind that offensive line, just getting a great surge. Right this defensive line, the strength of their defense, but still not very big. 260, 255, mostly across the front. They've already been worn down, and that Ohio State line is going to continue to do that. First and 10 Buckeyes now inside the 15-yard line. Orlando page 75 at the bottom of your screen. You're going to watch him mow someone down. It's going over his side, and there's Pepe Pearson. And this time, the Owls do an excellent job of playing off those blocks and making the stop. Well, delayed running plays don't always work when you get a lot of pressure from the defense. Rice this time bringing their safeties up, bringing their corners up. A delayed counter type play is a timing play. And if you get pressure in the backfield, it disrupts that timing. Pearson that time had no place to go. It was Dufius McCalla, you see the defensive back, really came up and made a nice play, shedding blockers, made the stop. So the Buckeyes have second and 12 at the 15-yard line now. Straight back to pass. He's got a man down here in the corner. Touchdown, Ohio State. Demetrius Stanley, a 
perfect drought, and the Buckeyes are on the board for the fourth time this afternoon, and a beautiful drive it was. And Jermaine looked a lot better on that series, Randy. He just needed one series to get his feet wet. This one was a lot better. Well, when you're working with new receivers, it takes a little bit longer for the timing to get up. Take a look up top. You see Stanley runners around. Excellent protection. Jermaine, again, knowing he's going to get hit, throws a perfect pass. What was really nice about that ball is he threw it before Stanley made his cut. That's 100% a timing pass and a timing pattern. Not having a lot of experience working with each other, executed perfectly. Josh Jackson for his fourth extra point of the afternoon. And the Ohio State Buckeyes, who have not been beaten in a home opener since 1978. Woody's last year. Penn State beat them here 19 nothing. Well, the streak looks like it's going to continue. The Buckeyes have been tough against Rice. They scored four out of five. Jermaine looked pretty good there, didn't he, uh, Jim? Yes, he did, Tim. You see his two quarterbacks. Jackson and Jermaine. Interesting when Jermaine threw the touchdown pass right afterwards. One of the first guys to meet him was Stanley Jackson, and I'm sure that's something the that coaches like to see because while the two guys may be fighting for some playing time, being teammates, and having that chemistry feel is far more important, Tim. I mean, they're talking at home saying, I don't know who's going to go in on the next series here, right, Randy? <laughs> and Jermaine off to a good start. 3 6 54 with a score. So it'll be Andy Stanton to kick off again for Ohio State. And Michael Perry is getting used to uh, fielding kicks. This time he gets it at the 7-yard line against the win. He's got speed and a little hole. And he brings it out over the 30-yard line fumble. They say it's down the right downs will retain possession. And they need something to go their way. They've only had one drive so far into Ohio State territory. That was the last one, and it's stalled at the 35. So now Ken Hatfield has to keep his team together and try to have them keep playing hard, right, uh, Randy? Absolutely. You need you need to remember as you look at this replay right here. Clearly, Perry was down before the ball came out, in good field position for Rice. As you said, Tim, you need to realize what you want to get out of this game. You see the scoring drive there by Ohio State. Look, these that time it took them eight plays instead of the two and four play drives that they had earlier. You need to continue to execute your offense. You're down 28 to nothing. Your best chance, build on this game, execute well, use it to learn as you proceed through the season, and that's what they need to focus on. At the 30-yard line, Nelson is caught in the backfield for a loss. Andy Captain Moyer, the great freshman prospect, was right there to knock him down. You know, one thing that's interesting about this game so far, Randy, even though it's one-sided, we've had very few penalties, guys in motion holding off sides, and in the first game, you might expect more of that. So far, we've had none of it, frankly. Especially when you run your option offense. Here you see Captain Moyer coming up, reads it right away, sees the fullback, doesn't have the ball. Now the fullback is his man, but when he sees the fullback doesn't have the ball, he ran right by him, got into the backfield. That's why Nelson couldn't pitch, because he saw Miller out there taking the pitch back away. Therefore, Captain, Captain Moyer really took away two guys. Second down now. 13 yards to go for the Owls. Here's Nelson, and again, that's just no place to go. There's nothing but red jerseys in there. That's Foya Eisenhardt this time, and he's a backup player, and he's in there, and he makes a stop for a loss. And the Buckeyes are just teeing off now on defense. You take a look here. They are doing a nice job of beating the offensive linemen with their defensive linemen. And when you do that, you're taking away the fullback, so it forces Nelson to have to keep the ball. But you see all the red jerseys outside. They got two on the quarterback, two on the pitchback. The offensive line is not doing the job blocking the defensive lineman. That's therefore taking away the fullback, and you're cutting out the number one option that Rice would like to do, which is give the ball to the fullback. Now do they risk throwing the ball this far back in their own territory. They have two wide outs at the bottom of the screen on third and 14. Nelson with one setback will sprint out and walk. And he's got a man over the middle. If he can get him, and he does get him. Now the question is, it's a foot race to the end zone, 30, 25, 20. 15 and out of bounds at the 11-yard line, and that play worked well. Rod Newhouse was the receiver. There is a flag on the play back up field, and let's see if this is going to come back. And it would be a shame holding on Ohio State, a personal foul on Ohio State, and so the play will stand. For one of the few times, Nelson has time to throw. Nice job. You see Wood right there blocking out Captain Moyer, and he gives Nelson time to throw, and he throws the ball with plenty of air underneath it, which gives Newhouse a chance to get out there and adjust to maybe what isn't a perfectly thrown ball. Nice play that time by Nelson. 62 yards on the pass to his receiver at the 12-yard line. They call personal foul. Now, are they going to tag something onto this or not? 
I thought the quarterback got hit after the after the play, and I think that's what it was. He very clearly was roughing the passer, yeah. and Nelson had gotten rid of the ball a good couple of steps before he was hit. So they'll move it half the distance to the goal line down to about the seven. Half the distance to the goal line at the end of the run, first and goal. Referee today is Jack Tice. There he is. You see, clearly had gotten rid of the ball before Pincus was there and put the hit on him. Really an unnecessary hit. Especially at a, when you're ahead, 28 to nothing like that. Pincus right there is the guilty party. Hard to hide in front of 92,000 people. Well, they'd have a little something more up to talk about if they could get in here before the half with 3.49 to go. It's first and goal for the Owls at the Ohio State seven-yard line. Nelson to the second man. This is their speed back. Michael Perry, and he's in for a touchdown for Rice. And the Owls on a third and long hit a pass, and then Perry takes it in, and the Rice Owls are on the board for the first time this year. Great job that time by Perry setting up the block. The misdirection play again. Now he sits back. He lets the receiver take more out of the play. Enough patience by Perry that time to let that block take place. Great job by Godfrey on the block. Nice job by Perry setting it up. And give Rice credit for hanging in there and still playing hard in here. Mike Ruff, the kicker here for the Owls. will put the placement down, left puts it up, and it is good. There's timeout on the field with 3.44 remaining in the first half. Rice has cut into Ohio State's lead at 28-7 Buckeyes. They'll get the ball when we come back to Ohio Stadium in a moment. And two good plays back-to-back -back by the Rice Owls who made it 28-7. Randy, once again, you see the play coming right at you right here. Seldom do you run the ball well to the outside without getting good blocks from your wide receivers and your tight end. There again, Godfrey does a nice job taking it right out. Perry did a nice job setting him up. All right, Michael Perry averaging seven yards a carry. By the way, that's, uh, there's the Rice drive. That scoring, or that 62-yard uh, pass completion was the longest in Chad Nelson's career. He had uh, completed a 53-yarder for a touchdown a year ago. Now he has a new high. So John Cooper can't be happy with his defense there. And the crowd's a little more quiet now, even though it's been mostly all Ohio State. But the right Owls, that's got to pick them up a little bit, Randy. Well, when you play the option and the wishbone, you're going to give up big plays. And that was one play that got him all the way down there. I think he'd be much more upset if Rice put together a 70-yard drive, taking it five, six yards at a time. So now the Owls will kick off for the first time this afternoon. And that's Scott Grimes to put a good foot into it. And this one, he's from Dallas. He say he can kick it a long way, and he did right there. And the Buckeyes will get it first and 10 at their 20. So who's going to play quarterback now? Will it be Stanley Jackson or Joe Germain? Or will it be someone else? Tom Hoyne's the third stringer now. Bobby's a little brother. And uh, I think Stanley Jackson's going back in. His helmet is on and Jermaine's is off. So we'll probably see Stanley Jackson, who's three for three, on uh, touchdowns per drive. And there goes the quarterback for the Buckeyes back onto the field. Now with 3.44 to go here for Rice, uh, Randy, obviously what they want to do is just to keep Ohio State from putting any more points on the board here and get into the locker room and regroup a little bit. Absolutely. They, they want to play fundamental football on both sides of the ball. Play your technique. Don't get sloppy. Play fundamental football, and let's see how things go. Rice would love to get a turnover here. There has not been one yet today. Here's Jackson to Pepe Pearson. That's been money in the bank so far, and it's a first down Ohio State. And But not for the good play by Carlin Bedford, the defensive back. Pearson might have broken that one. But it's a first down, and Pearson is getting close to the 100-yard mark. He's at 95 here in the first half. You know, Ohio State just has such great team speed, whether it be in the backfield or wide receivers, even their offensive line. They run so well. Rice is a little bit tired defensively. They've been on the field just about the entire first half. You can really see Ohio State wearing them down, creating those creatures to get to the outside. Officially, Pearson, 14 carries, 91 yards, two touchdowns. Now Jackson, a little play action here. He could run or throw it. He's good at both. He will tuck it, get to the 35, hop over a man and go out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Just been almost two full quarters here, Tim, and you can already see how this Ohio State offense is setting up. Jackson, very talented physically, good quarterback. He seems to have a better grasp for the offense this year than in years gone by, but much more of a make-a-play, create-a-play, 
maybe a little more effective outside of the pocket. Jermaine, which we saw, a pocket passer, very accurate, very good. I think they're going to need both of those quarterbacks to do what they do as the season goes on. Ohio State has all three timeouts left here in the first half. It is second and three, and of course that stopped the clock when he went out of bounds, so there's 3-12 to play. Here's Pepe Pearson, and this time they get him close to the first down at about the 42. Whether that's close enough, who knows? Andy Clifton, who's back in the game after injuring his knee number 82, made a good move. Clifton's a tough kid, and they need him this entire season. Absolutely. He is a steady, solid performer. Not really a big playmaker, but he's a guy that they have counted on. They need him, as you said, Tim, to be steady and solid, not only today, but for the rest of the season. Clock is running at 2.42. It will be third and less than a yard now. So Ohio State at its own 41-yard line here will try to keep the drive alive and pick this one up. Two wide outside formation, unbalanced line to the left. After Jackson fumbles, he picks it up on just on athletic ability alone. It's kind of long jump for the first down. <laughs> I think he got it, too, unless they say his knee went down. Nice play by Matt Calhoun, number 39, the fullback, as Jackson dropped the ball, found where his opening, where his decision was to try and get the first down. Calhoun came through there and just gave him a forearm shiver, which knocked him forward about two yards. I'm so. going to guess that he's got it, too. Looking at, uh, from our vantage point, it looks to me like he does, and it is a first down Ohio State at the Buckeye 42, 221 to play and a half. Ohio State with all of its timeouts, all three remaining here. Good presence of mind on Stanley Jackson to know where the quarterback sneak was called to go after you drop that ball. Sometimes you can panic. He did a nice job of keeping his poise and taking it right over the spot. At the Ohio 42-yard line now, Stanley Jackson with an eye formation and two split receivers. That play action, he's looking. Takes his time, the home run ball downfield has a man and it is incomplete and that was mighty close. David Boston, the wide receiver, almost came up with a big play. Boy, Jackson is so good, Randy, at eluding coverage, and that gives him time to set up an improvise from that point. And again, uh, a, it's hard to see the pressure coming from your backside when you play action like that. He did a nice job of reacting very quickly, tries to make the big play. The guy he threw to, David Boston, though he didn't make the catch, boy, they really expect big things out of him. A true freshman, Good effort on his part to dive after that ball. David Boston and Michael Wiley, both true freshmen. We've seen them already. We'll see them the rest of the day. They expect big things out of them at wide receiver. David Boston's the only Texas player on the Ohio State team. He'd have loved that all. Oh, we got a touchdown on Ohio State. That one's completed over the middle, and there's David Boston again. And just what we said that Bryce could not do, Boston takes one over the middle, 58 yards from Stanley Jackson. Touchdown, Ohio State. Whether it's a big play with Pepe Pearson running it or with Stanley Jackson throwing it or a receiver catching it. One-on-one -on -one coverage, great protection. Does a nice job that time. Jackson does a throwing the ball to the middle, away from the receiver. That way he tells Boston when he catches it which way to turn. Boston caught the ball, going with his momentum, and then clearly just outruns him into the end zone. Boy, I'd say I'm impressed with Stanley Jackson, too. I think this guy's got a lot of athletic ability. You can tell he's been coached to make these plays within the confines of their offense, and it paid off here in the first half. Stanley Jackson has uh, driven him to four touchdowns. Joe Germain won. Just what Rice did not want is to give up a touchdown in the final minutes, but it's Ohio State 35 and Rice 7. The Buckeyes averaged 38.6 a game last year. That was among the tops of the country. They're going to be off to a great start scoring with the stats here in 1996. So Rice is going to get one more chance with the ball before we go to halftime. You come back. We'll have more Big Ten football from Columbus in just a moment. Tim Stout with Randy Wright back at Ohio Stadium in Columbus. The Buckeyes scoring on the long pass play to Boston. And the kick guy, I believe, which just did sneak into the end zone. They'll call that a touchback. And so Wright is going to get it first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. This just athletic salutes the superior performances of these student athletes both on and off the field. This just athletic is proud to be associated with the outstanding versatility that makes these players unique, such as Jeremy Thickpen, a senior center in managerial studies and economics with an excellent grade point average, and Greg Bellisari, the senior linebacker and co-captain in pre-med at Ohio State, 3.63 is great. Well, look at all the numbers there, the stats and everything. Greg Bellisari, 
He's the guy that Ohio State is counting on so much in this 96 season. Our congratulations to Thigpen and Belisari, two superb student athletes at these schools. Now it's first down right, first and 10, the ball at the 20-yard line. That one just did sneak into the end zone, then bounced back out. So Nelson now with, with some time, not much of it to work with. The ball is fumbled out of bounds, but it'll be Rice's ball, I believe. That was Mike Gingrich with his first carry of the afternoon. Uh, Ryan Miller chased him and hit him. Now let's put him down out of bounds, I believe, uh, somewhere back. There's the Ohio State scoring drive, six plays, 80 yards. And you hear Jack Tice, the referee, make the call, so they'll put him out of bounds at the 23, make it second and seven. Tim, even though Rice is not the caliber of defense that Ohio State will face throughout the year, we made a lot out of, and a lot of people have talked about all the offensive firepower that Ohio State had leave and is now playing in the NFL. But boy, so far, John Cooper's got to be very, very happy with his offense's ability to make the big play and score quickly. They've blocked well, they've executed well. Their second down, Nelson stops, he goes back, looks downfield. This is into coverage, there's two guys there, and you throw it into coverage with that backfield, somebody more or less to pick it off. And for Ohio State, Ty Howard has the first interception for Ohio State of the season at the 49 of right, and the Buckeyes with 91 seconds to go and the half are going to get another chance to score again. Well, one of the few times Nelson does have a little bit of time to throw the ball, you see the offensive line for the most part giving him pretty good protection, so at the very end, you just can't throw the ball into a guy that's double and triple covered, and when you run that post corner route against a two deep zone, the cornerback drops back, Ty Howard right there doing a nice job of getting in the way, reading it, and last year, two interceptions, already today in his first game, an interception. All right, the quarterback for Ohio State will be Stanley Jackson again. He has scored every time he has been in the game. This is his fifth series. He scored on four of them. Ohio State with a little hipper dipper in the end of the round, and this is Dan Colson. He's got a blocker in front of him, and this one may go, and Colson cuts it back inside. Down on special teams for the Buckeyes to make the stop. 
Nice race drive. These are not sustained drives. And one play, 49 yards following the interception. And of course, as we said at the top, Rice just can ill afford to turn the ball over at all. And that one really burned him. Jim, you brought up a very good point. You talk about some of the true freshmen in Ohio State had probably the number one recruiting class last year. We've got seven or eight true freshmen that are going to see action today. Tom Cooper serious. We're not going to have these guys for five years anyway. If they're that good, they're going to go into the pros. They've lost so many underclassmen to the pros the last couple of years. We might as well play these true freshmen early and get out of them what we can. Well, Rice has a brand new quarterback in now. Chad Richardson is in for the first time today. He's a freshman from Allen, Texas, okay? Benji Wood was the man who carried on the play, and it looks as if Rice is content just to run the ball and get out of here uh, without any further damage. So, Chad Richardson replacing uh, Chad Nelson. And how far he goes from here on out remains to be seen. The Buckeyes take a week off, and then they'll host Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh's lost 10 straight coming into the game with Kent today. So, if Ohio State can play well in that game, that gets them all set up to go to South Bend and play Notre Dame. There's the pitch of the running back around the right side for a couple of yards, Mike Gingrich. And he's out to the 28-yard line. That was out of bounds and stopped the clock. Anthony Gwynn knocked him out. We talked about the true freshman for Ohio State, Chad Richardson, quarterback now for Rice. He is a true freshman. He has really impressed the coaches in the fall camp. That's why they moved him up to number two, and they really expect him to contribute this year. They're very high on Chad Nelson, but when you run the option and the quarterback takes the pounding, you're going to need two, if not three, of them to contribute during the year. So with 25 seconds remaining to be played, it's third down and two for the right Owls. Stay with us at halftime for scores and highlights from our Big Ten studio. Mike Leeson will have all those for you. We'll also visit live with Ohio State President Gordon Gee on a number of interesting topics. All that and more coming up at halftime on this opening day here in Columbus, Ohio, the 75th year in Ohio Stadium. And the Buckeyes, who came so close to winning a Big Ten title a year ago. You know, they haven't been to the Rose Bowl in 12 years, Randy. Hey, with the team they got out here today, they got to believe they're a solid contender. Well, I, I think they're going to be a solid contender every year. But I think this year, there is an awful lot of balance in the Big Ten. There's not, in my opinion, one super dominant team, but yet several teams that can play well on every Saturday. Whoever does play well on every Saturday, I think is going to wind up being there. So that makes for a very fun Big Ten conference. On fourth down, Rice is just short. Now, there's only 10 seconds remaining here in the first half. So the Owls uh, may want to go for it this figure if they don't get it, they're <laughs> time, but Ohio State doesn't need much time. <laughs> no, they, they, so I think they're going to let this clock run out right now. Uh, that's the best move right there. Just let it run out. There's no way Ohio State can score if there's no place being snapped. It's a great first half for the Ohio State Buckeyes, and especially for this guy, Stanley Jackson, who's got to be very pleased with his opening performance. After all, he has scored every time he's been in there for every series. 93,000 fans are excited. Ohio State leads right 42 to 7 here in the first half of this opening game from Columbus, Ohio. Dominating play from the get-go. They've had a couple of uh, breaks go their way, a turnover. They've made some big plays. They've used some true freshmen. They've had a huge first half out of Pepe Pearson, a couple of touchdowns, and he ran for nearly 100 yards. So it's all going the Buckeyes' way, and uh, this will be uh, a second five. Look down near the bottom there on the total yards. Ohio State has run up 359 yards here, Randy, in the first half. And that's really the one that stands out, Tim. When you get 359 yards in the first half, what a great job of executing. All right, so there's our statistics now. We're waiting for uh, some comments from Ken Hatfield. He's down on the field now with our Jim Barber. And Jim, it's got to be tough for him, but he's got to have to go yet. Okay, Ken Hatfield down here as we get ready for the second half. You said Ohio State was going to be good. Are you surprised they're as dominant as they are? Yeah, I'm surprised. And this is the hardest thing with 85. Trying, I told our team I apologize for not having Pete getting ready for the speed of the ball game. But uh, we just have not been able to do it. We don't have that kind of speed right now in our field. The Pearson we knew we had great speed, and he's shown it today. They just have done a great job. But it's a new half. We're going to continue to fight, and we're going to uh, find a way to win the game. Quickly, what do you hope to accomplish in the second half? We hope to win the football game. Uh, in our option, option offense, a lot of things we're doing, we've got to score a lot of points because our defense has been on the field entirely too much. 
Hopefully we made some adjustments. We've made some things and think we we got some things we think we can do. If we just get a little momentum this first five minutes, we'll be all right. All right, Ken, we appreciate your time. Ken Hatfield of Rice. Let's go back to Tim. You know, Randy, I don't want to ever underestimate Ken Hatfield. He's been in football 17 years as a coach. He's an upbeat guy. He's a class act. He's got his kids where he wants them to come out and play. Like he says, hey, let's come back out and try to win. That's what we're here for. Whether they do or not really is a moot point at this time. The, the problem with coming from behind with the option is the big plays have to come from the running game. Very seldom can you design big plays in the running game. It's got to come with just physical ability. And Ohio State has so much speed, it's going to be hard for them to do. All right, the Buckeyes will receive the kick off here to start the second half and uh, this is Demetrius Stanley and he's got room and he's got speed and he's out to the 45 yard line. He's just one player after another. If you could line up the top 50 guys in the goal line, tell them to run a 100-yard dash, they might all tie for it. But it's very similar to what we talked about earlier when we talked about D.J. Jones. He's a starter in 94. He misses all of last year. And they get Ricky Dudley that steps right in and becomes an All-American. Now Jones is back at Ohio State. They don't have young, inexperienced players. They have inexperienced players, but they're juniors and seniors when they play. You see that with Pearson. You see that with Jackson. So they're mature enough to know how to step right in and perform at a level that's expected of them. And we've seen that so far today. Blair Brown just did make that stop for Rice. Stanley Jackson has scored every time he's been on the field. And he's back at quarterback number eight, the junior from Patterson, New Jersey. Realizing his dream, he gives it to Pepe Pearson. And that time the cornerback comes up and makes a good play for the Rice Owls, and that was done by David Gerardo. And so that'll make it second down. And Pearson has rarely been stopped in this game so far this afternoon, especially when he's run to the outside. That time, Gernardo came up from his cornerback position, made a nice one-on-one -on -one tackle. You haven't seen Rice do that. That's why Pearson's had such success to the outside. Adjustment, Rice made it halftime. First play it seemed to work. All right, second and eight for Ohio State. The Buckeyes have freshmen in there at their wideouts now. High formation for Stanley Jackson. Play action. He's got time, but he's got a man wide open at the 50, 45, and out of the 39-yard line. And for the Buckeyes, that is Sean Spring. That's Matt Keller, I'm sorry, the fullback out of the backfield. And so Keller, who's a versatile player, right? He can run, he can block, he catches passes. And he's someone Ohio State's going to use a lot this fall. They didn't want to start him today because Jackson would have, was making his first start at quarterback. Pearson making his first start at tailback. They didn't want to start Keller, a redshirt freshman, and have three backfield first-time starters. So he didn't get the start, but he's going to play a lot. At the 39, first down, Ohio State. Jackson to throw deep. He's got a man down there. And they get tangled up a little bit. And that time, even though... Uh, Jimmy Redman was hoping that he might get a break from the official that isn't to be. This is a point we talked to John Cooper about yesterday. With the schedule coming up, they play Pittsburgh in a couple of weeks, but then they go into Notre Dame, and they play Penn State, and they play Wisconsin. You want to leave your starters on the field and give them real experience. If Jackson just turns around and hands off, He's not gaining that experience he's going to need for the next couple of weeks down the road. So they need to put him under fire, let him read defenses, let him see things as they happen, and they're going to keep throwing the ball and let him try and get that experience here. Jackson's numbers are, you see, impressive. Two touchdowns today. Now second down and 10 for Ohio. He's got his man wide open out here, and that's going to be another first down for Ohio State. And it's a great catch by David Foster, who's having an impressive opener for Ohio State down to the 25-yard line. He was brought down by Carlin Bedford after struggling for a couple of more yards. A lot of times you get these young receivers, they don't want to run with the ball after they catch it. They think when they catch it, their job's done. Boston, 6'3", 205, great size, showed some good strength on that catch, too. Stanley Jackson's a percentage of drives to touchdown. 100% so far, five for five. This is his sixth drive of the day, and he has the Buckeyes close to the red zone now, and Pepe Pearson is inside the red zone, and a whole lot more, and that's three touchdowns for Pepe Pearson this afternoon. You really saw some great acceleration by Pearson that time. Huge ball, nice job of blocking by Ohio State's offensive line, and Pearson eluded the would-be tackler, and then really accelerated and ran away from the rest of them. They say he does not have the size of some of the previous Ohio State tailbacks, but he's got great quickness, great balance, and excellent vision. And we've seen that here today. I've really been impressed with the job Pearson has done. Pearson, uh, a, a runner running behind Eddie George last year, so he only ran for about 385 yards over the season. He's going to have close to that after a couple of games, the way things are going so far. 
And once again, Josh Jackson on to keep the thing going, and he puts it right up and through. So that's Stanley Jackson's sixth series he has been in for, six touchdowns for Ohio State. Take a look again at the hole that's opened up by that offensive line. Calhoun, a nice block. There's the move, and then there's the acceleration right there as he runs away from Bedford. Keep in mind, Bedford's the defensive back. He's got good speed himself. Time out on the field, 13-21 to go, third quarter. The Buckeyes are on a roll this afternoon, and we'll come back with more from Columbus in a moment. down on Randy Ryan and Jim Barber at Ohio Stadium in Columbus. Michael Perry gets to field another kickoff, and this one he is going to bring out. And he's going to be about at the 18 or 19-yard line. Pepe Pearson having a spectacular day. 17 for 119 and 7 yards a carry and 3 scores. Doesn't get much better than that. Who came into today's game with 168 carries in his career, so even though he's not started yet, he's had a lot of action at that tailback position. 4.3 yard average today at a seven yard average. Ahmed Plumer was in there on the stop for Ohio State and we've got one of the right fouls. That's Michael Perry who's worn out from getting hit on those kickoffs. He's down momentarily and Wright uh, can ill afford to lose him. We'll check the right quarterback now. They used two in the first half and it looks like Chad Nelson's gonna come back in here. Perry's up and he seems to be okay. But Tim, in listening to Ken Hatfield, he fully expects at least to come out here and execute with the intent of, of winning the football game. And I think that's going to be a pretty big chore, but they've got 10 games to go, and he needs to execute this offense the way that they need to over the next 10 games here in this second half. So I think that's what they want to focus on. Don't get sloppy. Don't break your concentration. That's when penalties happen. That's when injuries happen. Stay focused, take it one play at a time. Well, and they play at Tulane next Saturday. That might be a game that they can certainly have more success than what they've had today in Columbus. Now here's the second running back, too, and he's got good yardage this time up the middle. Good blocking through the middle for Spencer George, and he gets through in a first down for Rice. A sixth first down of the afternoon. Ty Howard had to come in and make the stop. Nice. Good. Nice job blocking that time by their offensive line, but even that play was a misdirection. George was supposed to take that to the left side of the ball, but Ohio State's pursuit and speed had already shut that off. George did a nice job of seeing the hole open up on the right side and cutting it up. Okay. After this play, Jim Barber has a special guest. We'll go meet in just a moment on first down for Rice. At the 32-yard line, Chad Nelson is going to call timeout. That's our first timeout taken of the afternoon. Couldn't come at a better time because Jim Barber's on the sideline with a special guest. Jim? Yes, Jim. Ben Dempsey, 92 years young today. Happy birthday, Ben Dempsey. 92 years of age. You've been here in Columbus since when? Since 1922. I transferred out of Michigan, came to Ohio State. Played against Michigan. Did you really? Oh, yeah. We won the Big Ten Championship the first time they ever won it in 1925 in basketball, and that spring we won the baseball championship. So I have two gold balls. That's amazing. Uh, beating Michigan and being a former Michigan man, now Ohio State man, we assume you'll never go back. Well, I was raised in Detroit, and obviously I would go to Ann Arbor, but uh, Dad, we've always had racehorses, harness horses, and he couldn't find a place to train out at Ann Arbor, so he called me, and I was in New York visiting my grandmother. And he told me about it, but he says, I'm in Columbus, Ohio. He says, it's a good school here. They call it Ohio State. What do you think about it? <laughs> well, who am I to tell my dad who I'm going to go to school when he's paying the freight? So I came here in 22 and been here ever since. I'm very happy. All right, Ben, we appreciate you joining us. And Tim, should I sing some more? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were just going to tell you no. <laughs> Not the format. <laughs> but I'll tell you, he's a marvelous gentleman. And he just made all the Michigan guys just get that much more ready for the Ohio State game come November. All right, up for uh, Rice now after the timeout to give off the left side. Good yardage up to the 39-yard line. And Rice now using a couple of other backs with Dupia. Uh, hang on, i got to make sure you get No. Hang on, we'll get it here for you. Oh, what, Benji got it. Okay, Benji got a number 32. I was going to say it isn't 22 from where we are. Damon Moore got the stop. Benji would... Uh, He's having a pretty decent first game for Rice, all things considered. They like him at fullback. Whitlock, the other fullback, was injured and could have played today, so uh, Benji Wood getting the call. Now it's second and four for Rice. Ball is on the 38-yard line. Little misdirection here, and this time George is stopped close to the line of scrimmage at the 40. Misdirection again, only this time coming from the left side back to the right side. 
George ran where the hole was supposed to be. Again, with Ohio State's pursuit, there's really not much of a hole there for any of the right backs to run through. Luke Fickle made the stop, and there's a player down on the field here momentarily. And uh, we'll check uh, who it is as soon as we can get a good look on the number. It is 92. Fickle is bumping a little bit. Let's see if we can see on the replay here. See Fickle number 92. The slant onto the inside. The linebackers step up. Nice job by Fickle with the tackle. But I think it, we rolled over one of his other players, and it was the, looks like the right leg, right ankle wound up of maybe Win Winfield Garnett. Number 68 is, yeah. is, I believe, who it is that got rolled on by Fickle, or by, by Fink, excuse me. I think that's what caused the injury. It is Winfield Garnett who has shaken up the 6'6", 305-pound junior from Riverdale, Illinois. At least he is sitting up, and John Cooper is out there. This is a player that John Cooper went on and on and on about yesterday. He think he is going to be just a super player. 6'6", 305-pound junior. He's an excellent run stopper. He's had a great camp, and they have very, very high expectations for him. Not a pleasant sight watching him come off the field with some assistance. Most of it, though, appears to be under his own power. Now the clock starts. 12 minutes to play in the third quarter. Third and three for Rice at the Owl 40-yard line. Chad Nelson now with everybody in stack on that spread option attack. One wide out at the bottom of the screen. Nelson has a hole, and he has a first down. He slipped down at the 45, but as Randy says, when they run that right, it's tough to defense the option, and that was an excellent five-yard block. It was a great read by Nelson. He saw the hole open up early. Ohio State took the fullback coming through. See from ground level here, Good pullback. You see the offensive lineman open it up. Almost a designed play for the quarterback to carry there. Just an inside ride. Pulls it out. Big hole right there. One of the few times right to pass. Such a big hole within the tackle box. Within where the two tackles play. Two first downs on the drive for the Owls now at their own 44-yard line. Nelson a quick drop to pass. And he's got his man into Ohio State territory at the 48-yard line. Thad Bridges makes the catch. At short of a first down, make it second down and three. Ty Howard was there to knock him out. I think if you're Ken Hatfield, you have to be happy with what your offense is doing right now. They're staying within their game plan. They're running their basic offensive plays. They have not given up at all. The effort seems very, 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 very good. Yet they're, they're executing, and they're just taking five or six yards at a time. Second and three now for the Owls at the Ohio 47-yard line. You can see the spread option. The H-back is in motion here. This is the fullback wood, and he's through, and he has a first down for right. Matt Plinkus had to come in uh, from the secondary and make the stop. None of these 92,000 fans have left yet today on an overcast, warm day in Columbus. It rained overnight, but the field was covered and was in very good shape. As you can see here, again, this field was installed in 1990, prescription athletic turf, and they like it. Much like the first drive on offense Ohio State had with their first unit in there, most of the players on the field for the Buckeyes right now are their starters. You give them at least one drive to come out of the tunnel and get their feet wet in the second half, and Rice is doing a nice job moving the ball against them. First and 10 at the 41 for the Owls. Nelson, that time, the handoff was a little bit muffled with Wood, but he gets it over the 40 to the 39, make it second down and eight. Looked like Tim... Wood and Nelson didn't read the same thing right there. Your fullback and your quarterback have to read the same thing. So one doesn't keep the ball, one doesn't try and pull it out. It looked like Nelson wanted to pull that ball out, but Wood wanted to keep it. And when you've got majority of the ball, hard to pull it out of that fullback stomach. Wood came up with just a short game. You know, we haven't mentioned Ohio State. It has 10 starters on defense, but it's got three changes in its defensive coaching staff this year. And Fred Pargett is now uh, as the defensive coordinator. He's been on the staff here 15 years. Pass inside is complete. That's down to the 34-yard line. Make it third down. Let's go back to Mike Leeson in our Big Ten studio. Mike? Okay, Tim, Georgia Tech, North Carolina State, C.J. Williams. Nice opening up the middle right here. Six-yard touchdown, his third for the day. Georgia Tech, 28-16 over NC State. Tim? Okay, Michael, so some other games around the country on this busy Saturday in college football. See, Wisconsin, Randy, your school's only leading Eastern Michigan at the half, seven to nothing. 
Badgers opening That's game a surprise. Today. Yeah, that's a surprise. It's gotten a lot of experience coming back. Big things expected from them this year. Third down and four, and there's another first down for Rice. So the Owls are doing a great job here on this drive. Now let's go back down to Jim Barber on the sideline. Jim? All right, Jim, the work continues on Winfield Garnett. It is his right knee that is banged up. They're not sure of his status at this particular point. He was in some pain to begin with. Now he is sitting up. And they're trying to acknowledge the situation and hopefully we'll have more of an update, but as to a situation getting back in this game, unknown at this point, according to the team doctor. First down right, and the Owls have it now at the Ohio State 25 yard line. As Randy said, they're moving the ball against Ohio State's first defense here. And the Ohio State crowd comes alive. They want to stop right here. Ward back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. That play never really got developed at all. Not at all. We, when Ohio State went into an adjustment right before the ball was snapped, they put five linemen down. And when you do that, you move the nose guard right over the center. Your quarterback doesn't know who to read. What you do is you just run out of numbers. You don't have enough blockers to block everybody. No matter what Nelson would have done, Ohio State had the right defense on the field to stop that play. Matt Slinkus on the stop. Woods now 10 carries, 53 yards for Rice. So he's done a pretty good job. Clock continues to run. 8.05 to play in the third quarter. Nelson to Ken Hatfield for a play here. So at the 25 yard line on second and 10 and the Owls break the huddle. Brad Nelson under center. Ohio State uh, they're going to stop that play. Somebody either pulled or jumped either way. This is one of the first times we've had a dead ball foul here before a play started with a penalty. You mentioned earlier in the first half, very few penalties. I don't believe the Rice House had a penalty in the first half, and Ohio State had three. All start offense. For the first game of the year, pretty cleanly played. Okay, so the Owl coaching staff not overly happy about that. Ken Hatfield brought some of his coaches from Clemson with him. And of course, they're now in their third year. They're all excited, the Rice Owls are, about beginning play this fall in the Western Athletic Conference. They're in the Mountain Division. 16 schools, eight in each division. Hatfield's a veteran of the Western Athletic Conference, and he's a very big proponent of it. One of the things that he told us was this is the best personnel for their offense that they have. Last year, they had basically a drop-back quarterback. The third year, Hatfield has been successful running this offense everywhere he's been, and he believes that it's going to be successful at right this year to be a good year for him. Second down and 15 for the Owls at the 30-yard line. Now the pick to the end, and if he can break the chain, he has something but a good play by the Buckeyes cornerback again. It's not a shot. Springs makes such a good play at that time, and George was the ball carrier, Spencer George, and he was stopped. You hear a lot about Sean Springs' ability to cover receivers, but this is what separates him from most cornerbacks. Well-executed play by Rice. They get the ball to George out on the flank, and Springs comes up. Earlier we saw him make a tackle high and wrapping up uh, back in the receiver. This time, George, a little bit bigger, 205 pounds, takes him on low, knocks his feet right out. Excellent tackle. Third and 10 of the 25 now for the out. Nelson, the short drop in the pass. He's got his man turned around. And then a nice play. They say there's no interference, and Springs bats it down again. And Hatfield is on the field screaming for interference. You might look at that again. I'm not sure if it was an interference either. Well, sometimes you make great plays at cornerback, and uh, sometimes you get a little bit lucky. And I, I think, as we'll see here, we'll see the replay of Springs over here on the cornerback uh, on Bridges. Watch him. I think he reaches up and he grabs him with his arm. Oh, yeah. And pulls him down. And yeah, I think he got away with one right there. He might have. And Hatfield, <laughs> Hatfield saw it too. Didn't like it. Not much he can do about it. Sean Springs, they say that he could be a high contender for the Jim Thorpe Award. Only one other Big Ten defensive back has ever won that. Now we'll try a 42-yard field goal here for the Rice House. Craig Ruff angles to the right from the 32, 42-yarder. It is up and it is in that direction, and the kick is no good. It is just wide, and so Ruff comes away. The Owls had a sustained drive, but it's no good. So it's 49 to 7. Buckeyes still have the lead with 6.38 to go in the third quarter. We're back at Ohio Stadium to watch a Bucks on offense in a moment. Whee! Here's something I want you to think about. This is athletic, athletic. We're made for whatever you like to do, like fighting. Football. And for you Europeans, football. One gram for every sport. You can't say that about these outfits. Why, the unitar, that is special. Unnecessary spending. 20 yards. So, no matter what your game, this is athletic. One thing to win. But pick your colors carefully. Imagine a 24-hour. Another bad.
Badgers third down. They decide to go upstairs on a third and goal. Mike Daniel, eight yards to Tony Simmons. 14 nothing Wisconsin in the third quarter. Let's go back to Columbus. Joe Germain is now back in at quarterback for Ohio State. He's had three series today. This to run the team and all six series resulted in touchdowns. That's pretty good average, Randy. That, that's, a, that's a pretty good average. It's hard to get beaten out when you're doing that, no matter what the backup guy comes in and does. <laughs> I mean, even a touch football on the street, you can't do much better than that. First and 10 now, Ohio State, Buckeye 35, Jermaine right through the middle again. Jackson to the 39-yard line for Ohio State. So now... Uh, Jermon Jackson, who's in there with Jermaine when he runs the team. So they switch the backfields completely. If you look at those owls on the right helmet, the, the, the Eagles there, that's a little bit of a change in their logo. They wanted to make it more marketable for merchandise for Rice fans of the Texas and Houston area. They want to market the Rice Owls in a new conference and make them look good, and they do look good. They've got snappy uniforms down there, so that's a little bit of a change in their headgear this year from a year ago. Second and six for Ohio State at the Buckeye 39-yard line. And Jermaine to Jermon Jackson in the backfield. First down, Buckeye. He just powered over the right side of that line out to the 49-yard line. Brutus the Buckeye's been happy all day long. He made himself silly there. He's been flat happy. And you mentioned earlier there are different backs. We've seen different receivers in there as Ohio State has been substituting. Not a lot of substituting, though, in that offensive line. They are doing an outstanding job. you got Pace, Murphy, Bolson, Daniels, and Burris. And they've been going the distance and just continuing to wear down that Rice offense. But we will see some true freshman play, I'm sure, as this game goes on. They're very high on them as backup linemen. Now, Lazupius McCalla, again, had to come in from his defensive backfield spot to make the stop. Here's Jermaine's got a man wide open. And this time, it just slipped out of the hands there of Matt Keller who uh, had some running room, but uh, maybe he wanted to turn first before he had it. I agree with you. I think he tried to turn up. He realized he was getting a little close to the sideline. Got to watch that ball all the way in before you turn up. I think he had more room than what he thought he had. So that'll make it now second down and 10, does it not? Yeah, ball to the Ohio 49-yard line. Good to have you with us wherever you are around the Midwest. This creative sports begins another year of Big Ten football. And the Ohio State Buckeyes will be one of those teams vying for the Big Ten title based off what we have seen here today. Put back. That's a mean pass. And he's down the middle, and he's got a man who's going to see him, and it's fine, and it's a touchdown for Ohio State. Michael Wiley has two touchdowns in his opening game, and both of them coming from Joe Germain, and it's been a huge day of offense so far for the Buckeyes. You just can't make up for that speed. Michael Wiley, impressive running precision route, knowing where to be. Jermaine did a nice job this time when there's no free safety and you've got a guy on a post. All you need to do is throw him away from where the defender is. Watch his protection. He steps back there, throws a nice ball. Watch him lead him away from the defender. He doesn't throw it back over his right shoulder. He gives Wiley plenty of room to run away from that defender and catch the ball. Nice job. Put a lot of air underneath it so the receiver can adjust to it. Boy, it's hard enough for a team to get one good quarterback, and the Buckeyes have shown two here today. And Josh Jackson hits his eighth extra point of the afternoon, and there's a lot of time left to play in this game. 4.56 to go here in the third quarter. So Joe Germain, the transfer, and Michael Wiley in his first game as Ohio State Bucket, they're all going to be smiling in Spring Valley, California, when they see the highlights for Michael Wiley in his inaugural game in Columbus. We're back with more from Ohio Stadium in a moment. 1996 Atlanta. What better place to ask people about the taste of Wheaties, the breakfast of champions? It's got that good whole wheat flavor. This is good! You get something a lot more substantial out of Wheaties. A toasty flavor. Do you think all cereal tastes like you've never had Wheaties? I've had to go buy this. The championship taste of toasted whole wheat Wheaties. The athlete's accomplishments will last forever. These five collector's boxes won't. For Columbus, Ohio State, about ready to kick off. Randy, the Buckeyes uh, have gone a long way to get a lot of these great freshmen here today. 
And we'll talk about that in a moment as the right sounds bring this one back up. And there's running room out over the 30-yard line for Michael Perry. And he gets out to the 37-yard line. That's a good point, Tim. When we talked to Joe Hollis, he said one of the things they wanted to do was change the perception at Ohio State of only taking in-state players and being a team that ran the ball all the time through when they had to. They went out and got David Wiley, you see right there, or Michael Wiley and David Boston. These guys are true freshmen, and they brought them in here and wanted them to be able to contribute right away. Wiley's from, from California, and you've got Boston, who's from Texas. They want to be able to recruit nationally skilled players convince them that they're going to be a part of a very explosive offense and so far they've succeeded and they've changed the perception of what people around the country think about Ohio State's three yards in a cloud of dust. Chad Nelson is still the quarterback for Rice and his first pass here on this series is complete to Thad Bridges okay. You know there's an interesting statistic here too on Ohio State's defensive coordinator Fred Pugich. He played for Woody Hayes and he was an end and in 1973 23 years ago Fred Pugich if you look at the Buckeye scoring drive here Fred Pugich was the leading receiver on the 73 team with nine catches for 150 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Stanley Jackson and George Ramin can get that in a couple of a couple of series. A couple of series they got that. And that was Pugich's total for the year and he led the team in receiving. Woody somewhere, I don't know if he'd like all his pass. But they like that good. It's good. All right, here's Nelson, and he's out to about the 44 yard line. Let's put out a Jim Barber on the sideline. Jim. All right, Tim, you be sir, first 92 years of age to how old are you, Jennifer? I'm eight. Eight, so that's a median average of 50, I believe. Where did you get your lovely hat? This is Jennifer Kessel, by the way. Out um, over by the spinning wheel where you get things. Okay, that's probably where we parked at, I would imagine. And your mom, you seem to be quite proud of this young lady. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Nice little decoration. You enjoying the game so far? Mm-hmm. She's a young lady, a few words, guys, but I think she likes what she sees so far, Tim. Well, she's Natalie attired. There's no question about that. In fact, the president, he, he had gray slacks uh, with the O's, red O's on him. I mean, he was dressed. They dressed for the game, sir, stylishly young and old at Ohio State. One of the right owls is down as they're tending to him. We have 433 remaining to be played in the third quarter. And you can get a Buckeye hat. In fact, the souvenir business was just booming when we came down Late Avenue this morning, our crew. Let's go uh, back to our Big Ten studio and Mike Gleason for an update. Mike? All right, Tim, a tough trip into Kinnick Stadium for the Arizona Wildcats. More turnovers in the second half. First play from the scrimmage. Tom Knight intercepts Keith Smith's pass intended for Richard Dice. And then they capitalize. Cedric Shaw goes up over the top for the one-yard touchdown. 21-7 in the third quarter, Iowa over Arizona. Let's go back to Columbus. Boy, Randy, you look at the teams of the Big Ten that have got excitement going for them early. Uh, you got Iowa, Michigan, even Michigan State last week. Uh, Northwestern, Ohio State here today. Was kind of, look at all the teams, Penn State, that are all going to say as of tonight, man, you know, hey, we play well, we're going to be in this race. And they're all going to be right because if they do play well, they are going to be in this race because they all have enough talent to win the Big Ten. Doesn't mean they will because it comes down to how well you play every single week. But you have to have talent to start, and all of those teams have enough of it to win the championship. Well, Benji Wood, who's had an excellent day running for the Rice Owls in his first game for Rice from his fullback spot, he's averaged about five yards a carry today, uh, gets up and gingerly walks off. But that didn't look good the way they're holding his shoulder there. And hopefully, uh, uh, Dr. with you, Benji, that's nothing serious. Well, you can see Ohio State's defense where those 10 returnees have done the job on the Rice Owls this afternoon, just 110 yards so far. And there's some time left, of course, all of the fourth quarter and 433 left here in the third quarter. I'm amazed that this crowd is all still here. I mean, 93,000, I see no empty seats anywhere. You go to an Ohio State home football game, you're there until somebody says it's over. Well, it was a, it was a long off season with the way Ohio State had their high expectations, 11-0. Then they have the two losses to end the season and, and the disappointment of not going to the Rose Bowl. And, these people and these players have been waiting for today for a long time, and they have let out a lot of frustration in their team on the field. Not disappointed, these fans. You know, I got on my notes there, too. This is the 107th year of Ohio State football. Do you realize that these 107 opening games, they've lost 11 of them? I mean, that's just incredible. Over 107 seasons, only 11 opening games went into the loss column for the Ohio State Buckeyes. And it won't be number 12 today. There's no... Uh, no doubt about that. They're going to refurbish the stadium a bit. Benji Wood looks like he's going to get the, some help for the locker room. 
I would not be surprised if he's going in for x-rays to see if he's got something wrong with what looks like it, it could be a, a shoulder or a, a left arm. And as you said, he has played an excellent ball game. Been one of the few success stories on offense for the right now. And of course, uh, the Buckeyes uh, are going to end their losing streak today. People don't remember, but they lost to Michigan, lost in the Citrus Bowl to Tennessee. The streak ends today. In terms of overall, uh, they'll have their winning streak in one after a big effort here this afternoon. Nelson's still the quarterback, and he ran into Andy Captain Well, I'll tell you what you're going to be hearing about him. You know, Ohio State offered him number 36, which Tom Cousineau and Marcus Merrick and Chris Spielman wore. The Captain Moyer wore 45 at Westerville High School and said, hey, can I have 45 there? Well, he just hadn't committed yet. <laughs> so they went to Archie Griffin because he's the last guy to wear it, the two-time Heisman winner. And it really wasn't retired. It was just kind of unofficially retired. He said, do what you got to do to get him. And so Captain Moyer is wearing his high school number. And I would say that he uh, acquitted himself well in his opener today, Randy. Well, uh, Archie Griffin did it over a career. And, and I would say that Captain Moyer has got a lot to go. But so far, as you said, Tim, he's done it today and he's got to got to be pleased with the way he's played so far all right Demetrius Stanley will field this punt at his own eight yard line and away he goes and at about the 14 that's where it will come into end Joe Germain looks like he will check back in at quarterback for Ohio State that was Matthew Baldwin on the stop for the Rice Owls as they unpile so Ohio State uh, will have a chance here to uh, work again on offense leading 56 to 7 with three minutes and 26 seconds remaining to be played at third quarter you want to stay with us through the rest of the game today because we're going to keep uh, updating you on all the highlights and scores of other games around the country today's big 10 conference game is a copyright and telecast of creative sports incorporated at a use of the pictures descriptions or accounts of this telecast without the express prior written consent of creative sports is prohibited so we finally see the backup offensive line for ohio state in there now and here's Jermaine with the give around the left end, and there's running room over the 25-yard line. And that's Ohio State's Joe Montgomery. He is a junior who rarely sees any playing time at all. But Joe Montgomery, uh, has he didn't even uh, carry at all last season, so his first uh, carry for Ohio State today is a good game, nine yards out to the 24. Well, as Ohio State started this second half, they wanted to leave their first-string offensive defense on the field, or at least get him a series. They haven't come out of the locker room, this being the first game. They didn't want to sit them at halftime, so they gave them the first series, let them be productive, let them get a feel for it. Now they're really starting to get some of their backups in there. High formation now on second down. Here's Jermaine. Again, Montgomery around the right side, and he powers over for a first down to about the 26-yard line if they give him the spot. And the Buckeyes continue to add to their monstrous total of yardage today. Russell Streeter, the uh, defensive end, is in there to make the stop for Rice, and at the 27-yard line, the Buckeyes are in business with a new series of downs. This is where Ohio State has always been most effective, Tim. When you get into their second and third string players, they have always been so much better than everybody else's second and third string players. Not that much of a drop-off, and they've had a lot of success. After a little bit of a fumble on the snap, once again, uh, the carry is a good carry, too, out to about the 30-yard line by Montgomery. Joe Montgomery comes from Illinois, Robbins, Illinois, so he's one of those players who's not from Ohio State. Streeter ran into him again and stopped him. At the 30-yard line, clock running, 2.37, remaining to be played here in the third quarter from Ohio Stadium in Columbus. Montgomery doesn't get many chances to carry the ball, and when you do, regardless of whether you lose your shoe or not, you keep fighting and you keep fighting. You pick up all those yards you can because with Pearson and Jackson on the team, those guys have been very impressive. You don't know how many more chances you're going to get. Now a second down and seven from the 30-yard line. Again, here's George Germain. And again, this time to the tailback off the right side. He's out over the 40-yard line. Jermon Jackson carries. Ohio State came into this game today with nine straight wins on this field. And that's so this will be number 10 today. And probably number 11 in their next game against Pittsburgh. That'll be a tough game for the Panthers, who have a 10-game losing streak getting into their game today with Kent. Well, it was clear Ohio State, what they wanted to do was, was take this game in control early and yet give their starters a chance to do some good things because they're going to need these guys as they get into the tougher part of their schedule. You see Ohio State's numbers from today and what their, their records are offensively really piling it up. That time we got a blown route there. 
and there was some miscommunication with David Boston. That <laughs> he just wanted to run down and get another touchdown pass. He deals in touchdown passes. Well, some things you remember, some things you forget. And as a freshman, when you get into the, the real fire of real games, you don't always remember everything. And I think he read something a little differently than what Jermaine did. And Jermaine wisely gets rid of the ball. If there's going to be a mistake, don't hold the ball. Get rid of it. Come back and play another play. That'll be one of the few things that John Cooper can complain about today. That'll make uh, it second down now for the Buckeyes at their own 41-yard line. Jermaine to throw again. And he's got a man wide open. Wiley now has three touchdown catches today. What a day for Michael Wiley of Ohio State, who just continues to get wide open. And the key here is you can't play him in man coverage because the guy can beat you. Well, that's right. You, if you're going to play man coverage, you better be able to put pressure on the quarterback because you can't count on your defensive back staying on the receivers. Here, look, and he's got outside technique. He's McCullough, number 22, has got no inside help, but yet he's playing him on the outside. What an easy throw for the quarterback to not even have to have your receiver beat your, your quarterback. So wide throw by Jermaine away from the outside technique. That was a lot easier than it should have been. Extra point is good. I'm not sure Ken Hatfield appreciated that play. He kind of glares across the field at the Ohio State bench. And he has not taken his eyes off the Ohio State bench since that play was completed. It's now 63 to 7, and the Buckeyes are with 140 yards or so of their all-time career offensive yardage performance for a single game. And we still have one minute 38 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter at Columbus this afternoon. John Cooper said we don't have the deep threat this year. Well, they've had them today, and it's been more than one player, but Michael Wiley. Uh, attention Pittsburgh, Notre Dame, or anyone else. When this guy gets in there, you better stay behind him. Yeah, they, had, they had said they did not feel they had the one receiver that just had that blazing speed that they've had with Joey Galloway, that they've had with Terry Glenn, but they felt they had more speed but from more people. Uh, boy, I don't know. I think I've seen a lot of speed out there between these young guys, and I think that uh, they're not going to drop many steps when it comes to beating people deep like they have in the past. Well, Rice has a very inexperienced defensive secondary. There's only one veteran player back there, and the rest of them are new. And uh, keeping track of all those fast guys has been very, very difficult for them to do, obviously, today. And, and you're not going to cover, as we talked about during that replay, you're not going to cover a wide receiver one-on-one -on -one when you've got no center field help and you're getting no pressure on your quarterback. 63-7 to seven is our score. One minute, 38 seconds remaining to be played here in the third quarter. This is Michael Perry at the two-yard line. He's had a lot of experience today running it back. And most of the time they've contained him inside the 20-yard line, and that's where he is. Let's go down uh, on the sidelines. Jim, where are you? What are you doing? Jim, uh, in the Houston locker room, the latest on Benji Wood is encouraging. It was a dislocated shoulder, as was evident to most of the folks here. They have put it back into place. He'll be okay, but he will not return for this game. He probably feels just as well he does it. <laughs> That's his good news. I don't have to go back. What's the bad news? <laughs> And he's going to have a while to wait. A minute 33 to go third quarter, so Benji Wood can take the rest of the day off. It took a dislocated shoulder to get it for him, but uh, hopefully he will be able to come back and play. He's going to back in here now for the right foul. And uh, Chad Richardson is back in the game, and uh, things don't get much better for him. Matt LaVar, number 48 from Maumee, Ohio, a sophomore. They got a lot of young players on the Ohio State team on their three deep. And they're all seeing action here today. Matt LeVrar, number 48, and Chris Kirk, number 44, two linebackers that they really want to get in here and see some action. Kevin Johnson last year, linebacker for him, played a lot. They're going to try and redshirt him this year. He's a senior, and they feel they can, they can sit him down, they can play these younger guys and have Johnson for another year. Well, Belisari and Ryan Miller are gone. It's going to really depend on how well LeVrar and Kirk come along. Second down and 14 for the outs of their 14. And the, there's, just, there's just nobody there on that route. They didn't work for Chad Richardson, so that stops the clock. 39 seconds to play in the third quarter. Some of the faithful are leaving now. And for this fourth quarter, uh, it'll be interesting, Randy, because Ohio State 
most likely does not want to throw the ball around. You would think they've done that now for three quarters. And yet, on the other hand, what can they work on in the fourth quarter offensively that can help them? Well, I think you can get your backup offensive lineman in there. Some of these true freshmen that they want to see play, uh, Ben Gilbert, Kurt Murphy, Tyson Walter, these guys are, are true freshmen that they have in their two deep that they're going to have to count on down the season. So I think they want to work on their running game, let these guys open up some holes and get some game experience. And the whistle stops play before we get started here, so Richardson cannot get the play. That might have been a delay of game. Dead ball, delay of game on the offense. Take a third down and 14 to go now on a rather error-free day in terms of penalties. You know, the one thing that you can see is ominous here. Wright is going to have to punt the ball out of its end zone. And with the speed of the receivers, the return that Ohio State has the Buckeyes figure to get great field position when they get it back. This is third and 19, and the Buckeyes are just looking for the pass and digging in for it. And Richardson ducks away from one man, throws the home run ball there's just nobody there because the Buckeyes were deep and of course the speed is such a factor and the Buckeyes have it in their defensive secondary as you can see Gary Berry was with them all away well whether it's Chad Nelson or Chad Richardson at quarterback you're not getting very much protection back there so you don't give your receivers time enough to get that far down the field so therefore the chance of the big play coming along is going to be very very little David Boston is back to receive for Ohio State and he must be just itching to get this punt because he's got a little bit of a wind advantage here. Here, Chad Richardson, they just showed him here. You saw the picture of him. He's a true freshman behind 637 playing in the horseshoe. How do you think he feels? Boy, Tucker Phillips now cuts it to the 40-yard line, and here they go. Back up over the 50-yard line and out of bounds goes the Buckeyes' David Boston, the true freshman who also has had a big day today from Humble, Texas. He's the only Texas player on the Ohio State team. In fact, he's from the Houston area, so he knows all about Rice and knows some of the players on the Rice team. Well, all of his friends and family back home watching this game from the Houston area Got to be proud to see you do well. Now we'll see what the Georgia main helmet is on. Buckeyes are going with another quarterback. Tom Hoying, number 10, is coming into the game now for Ohio State. It's Bobby's little brother. He uh, He's from St. Henry, Ohio, a senior. His eligibility is a junior. And Tom Hoying was switched to an end position. And then when they lost to one of their other quarterbacks to injury, they moved him back to get him three quarterbacks. So here's Tommy Hoying on the field now. And that's the first cheer from the crowd in some time, and Elder's hand it off here. That's Montgomery on the carry, and he loses a yard. You can see the respect that these fans have for the Hoying family, and Bobby Hoying, for an All-American quarterback last year, they're showing their respect for him by the applause that his younger brother gets as he steps out there. That's the end of the third quarter. We have 15 minutes to play from Columbus. Tom Hoying's going to play in the fourth quarter, it would appear. We'll be back with more from Columbus in a moment. to Iowa City right now. Arizona down 21 to 10, receiving the punt. On the return, Rodney Williams goes 20 yards down to the 21-yard line, setting a good field position for the Cats. On the very next play, quarterback Keith Smith drops back. Good coverage by the Hawkeyes. So Smith tucks it up. He goes 21 yards for the touchdown. Good one going in Kinnick Stadium. It's now 21-17, Iowa. Tim Stout with Randy Wright back here at Columbus. Montgomery's carry, Jeff Montgomery, Joe Montgomery, he was not for a loss as a flag on the play. Let's go down to Jim Barber, who's on the sideline with someone. Hi, Jim. Hi, Tim. And you mentioned the uh, switch for Tom Hoying from one position to the quarterback spot. It's interesting. Uh, according to the folks on the Ohio State sideline, he spent all summer balking up to play tight end. So uh, he may be the strongest backup quarterback in the Big Ten this season. Yeah, and he threw seven passes a year ago and hit for two, he was two for seven for two touchdowns. So, uh, and uh, they were short touchdown passes. Nonetheless, he hit them. This is a personal foul that's going to go against Rice. Smash on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. And as if the Owls need that problem, that moves the ball down to the Rice 36-yard line. Virginia 24 to 9 over Western Michigan in the fourth quarter. And we just told you about Iowa and Arizona. 
here. It is now first down Ohio State. Tom Hoyne, the quarterback, will give it off to Montgomery here around the right side, and he pounds it down to the 30-yard line. Back down there by Larry Ruffin. Make it second down. Good look at Larry Ruffin. Boy, the Rice defense has had a lot of hits today. It'll be a little bit sore tonight. And, of course, the Buckeyes are going well over 600 yards. They're over 600 yards. Their school record for total offense is 715. Whether Ohio State breaks that today, that remains to be seen here in this fourth quarter. I saw Larry Ruffin right there. Not very big, 170 pounds. Come up and put a hit like that. As bad as Rice is being beaten, they certainly haven't given up their effort. Now Hoying on the give to Montgomery, and he's tackled down at about the 26. That's close to a first down. Larry Ruffin got him again. Buckeyes are content to run the clock here at this point with 13.50 remaining to be played in the game. Well, we thought it might rain a bit today. That was in the forecast. They're going to measure here. And it did rain overnight, and it was very windy earlier today, and it has been windy most of the day, but uh, the wind's been blowing the Buckeyes on offense down the field. Hasn't affected them in a negative way at all. It hadn't affected their passing game. And Ken Hatfield told us he was hoping it was going to be wet, hoping it was going to be windy, hoping it was going to be all kinds of things because he knew he couldn't stand there and play toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. But one thing he wasn't hoping is it was going to be 63-7. to seven. And I'm not sure all that would have made much of a difference either. And it's no shame to Rice at all. It's a marvelous school. They've had a great tradition over the years academically. They're listed in all the trades as one of the great schools in America. And they like their status in Division I football, and they love going into the Western Athletic Conference. And they've been competitive, too. And they won't do anything to sacrifice that academic. No, they won't. They refuse to do it. They say, uh, we just want to do as well as we can on the football field. And when we have success, great. And if we get beat, we're going to make a good effort of it. They're getting beat today, and they're still playing hard. And a couple of years ago, they tied for the South sure. Conference Championship. So uh, it can be done. We saw it happen last year with Northwestern. And Rice is, a, I believe, the smallest Division I school in America. And they're the smallest of the 108. You look at Larry Ruffin, who's played so hard this afternoon, get banged up there. Only one of four students, high school students, who applies to attend Rice is admitted. And again, their graduation rate is 76% at football, and that's the eighth best in the country. And don't sell Ken Hatfield short. Again, this is his 17th year. He's been a winner. He has a big winning record. He's 7-14 and one at Rice, but they figure seven of those losses were a field goal away from being win. And uh, he's only been blown out of one game, and that was at LSU 52 to seven a year ago. Well, this will be perhaps more one-sided than that. But uh, as Randy likes to say, you can take these and learn from them and get you better, and they, they may come back and beat Tulane. Well, and this is still just his third year. They've got a lot of players that are just in the first two years of their recruiting class when they can recruit on both sides of the ball players that fit their system i think they're, they're going to get better and i think the WAC conference is one that will be very good for them you know jess neely was the great coach at rice from 40 to 66 for 26 years so uh, he was a well-known figure and john heisman of the heisman trophy fame he coached at rice from 1924 to 28 so they have some football war and tradition there with backup players in the game, things tend to get a little sloppier, and the execution that had been so crisp early on, and sometimes by both teams, is lacking at the moment. And I think Rice is very tired on defense. I know their Football effort is there. Offense. Defense offside. Now he's confused, too. It's been a long <laughs> day. He's, been, he's tired of running up and down the field. When you get tired, you lose your concentration, and that's where the penalties and the missed tackles and things like that happen. 13 minutes remaining to be played in the game. Buckeyes trying to punch in another one here. It is first and 10 Ohio State at the right 15-yard line. Here's Montgomery. Great speed. Second effort down to the 11. Buckeyes are coming close to that 70-point mark. The Western Athletic Conference is the largest in America now with 16 teams, okay? And as you can see in the Mountain Division on the right, that's where, excuse me, the Pacific Division is where Rice is with SMU, TCU, Tulsa, BYU, New Mexico, UTEP, and Utah. And then the others in the Mountain Division. On second down from the six yards to go, Montgomery inside the 10 to the eight, make it third and three. 
Tim, you're going to see some wild football played in that conference with some of those throwing teams like Brigham Young and some of the wishbone teams like Air Force and Rice. You're going to get your fill of the entire gamut of football, especially on offense. The last time Ohio State's going to set the, if it scores again, I'm looking back here for the last time they've scored as many as perhaps said. They scored 70 against Northwestern here in 1981. So if they score again, this will be the most points perhaps they've had in 15 years. And Montgomery has a flag down at the goal line, flag back at the eight yard line. And we'll just have to wait and see whether this is coming back or not. This may go back against Ohio State. I, I think you may have a holding penalty against Ohio State, which would should bring this back. That's going to be a, a illegal block, personal foul, illegal block. So it's going to come back and take away what, what would have been a touchdown and given them that uh, 69th, maybe 70th point. So they'll replay the down. Let's see if we can see it. This is at the bottom of your screen. We'll see if we can catch it coming up. There was a block. You could see the contact was made up top, and then the back came in took his feet right out from underneath him and you can't do that when you've got a Charlie Sanders was the back number 21 that did that when contact is being made between an offensive and a defensive player you can't come up and initiate second person contact below the belt and that's what happened back at the 23 yard line now third and 18 the Buckeyes can get a first down at the five now, do they throw the ball here? That's, a, that's the pro set, and they tend to throw on that. Their tendency is to throw off this set. But in this case, they're going to run it. And it's not a bad run, all things considering, by Charlie Sanders, freshman from Rochester Hills, uh, Michigan. So he's a Michigan kid. How did the University of Michigan let him get away? I wouldn't be surprised to see them go for this either. Here it is, fourth down. You're not going to kick the field goal, I don't believe. They're going to leave that team out there. I wouldn't be surprised if they run it here also. You can see 93,479 here today for the Buckeyes opener. So it's fourth down and 11. Ohio State will do just that. Now, again, whether they throw or not, just simply remains to be seen. And they'll run it and just do the best they can. Montgomery breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles. He has a first and goal at the two-yard line. Jeff Montgomery, and the disadvantage he had is that the Rice pretty much knew they weren't going to throw it. Aaron Stanley managed to drag him down. He was just short of the goal line. So Ohio State piling on the yardage here today, and they are now getting close to 700 yards today. Montgomery has 10 carries, 49 yards, and he comes out of the game and gets a nice hand. Well, it's hard to fault the Buckeyes for executing as well as they are. They're, they're going for it on fourth down. They're not going for the field goal. They're not throwing the ball. You got good guys who don't get a chance to play. Good athletes, they're in there trying hard. And they're doing a nice job of executing. Well, and Rice is exhausted. They had two kids that almost fell down. Horning drops the snap, and all that'll do is move the down box a second to keep the clock rolling. But when you, can, when you travel, you can only take so many players. At home, you can dress a lot more, so you can get a lot more players in there. But right, they put in their second stringers, but they don't have many third stringers with them. So those guys have been out there a long time. And as you said, Tim, they're just physically and I'm sure mentally exhausted. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> I mean, you, you tend to feel a little bad for them up and down a field all day. And it's no shame to get pounded a little bit physically because Ohio State's huge. Well, the risk you take because you only have so few players is you don't want to get some of these guys hurt and then they miss the next couple of games and you wind up losing more than one game because you play Ohio State. Jermon Jackson is not going to make it. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. So the Jermon Owls have stopped two advances, here. but in a weird sort of way, Ohio State's in four-down territory. <laughs> well, <laughs> because they won't kick it. The best part for Rice is they're taking time off the clock by holding them out and not letting them <laughs> score on first down. Again, you have to go back to 1981 for to uh, find an Ohio State team with 70 points. They got that on Northwestern here. Third down, three yards to go. Tom Hoying will take a play from the bench. I'll tell you what, Stanley Jackson, six possessions, six touchdowns. They'll have to convince him in practice that he needs some improvement, but... And this time they're in for a touchdown. I think it's Jermon Jackson over from three yards out, and that'll make it a 69-7 game now. And the Buckeyes just can't. I tell you, their second, third string offensive linemen still just pound you straight backwards. You know, we talked about that earlier. Their second and third string offensive linemen are very, very good. They start for a lot of other teams. 
They don't get an opportunity to play very much, but when they do, they're going to give it their best effort, and more times than not, that's good enough. You know, Rice is still picked to finish runner-up in their division in the Western Athletic Conference, so as Randy said, they got lots of plays for you, and you don't want to get hurt. You don't want to, as we said, lose some of these players that wind up costing you more games down the road because they're injured. We'll be back with a kickoff in just a moment. Back in the Big Ten studios, the Georgia Tech picks up a victory over North Carolina State this afternoon. Big defensive play. Check out six foot three and 285 pound Derek Shepard. Picks it up, goes the distance. 28 carries, 148 yards, three touchdowns for C.J. Williams. 28-16. Tech. Let's go back to Columbus. Tim Stout along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber. The Buckeyes are 102 yards of offense away from their all-time single-game offensive record. They now have 616 yards a day. It's the most points they've scored since they beat Northwestern 70-6 in 1981. And they still have 9 minutes, 14 seconds remaining to be played. And they have one more chance to kick off. Ten touchdowns for Ohio State here this afternoon. Michael Perry may be setting the Rice School record for kickoff returns in one game. This time he gets it out to the 26-yard line. So it'll be first down for the Owls now as they try to work on offense here in these final minutes. You can see the Ohio State drive, 50 yards in 12 plays. That ate some time off the clock. But Tom Hoying now is one for one on series for touchdowns, huh? Hard to improve on what's been done, but yet you've got to be pleased that you're Ohio State. John Cooper, no matter who you're putting out there, you're getting execution, you're getting effort, you're getting concentration. I'm sure there were some questions on offense, but they're very pleased with those answers that they've had today. Okay, first down Rice now at the Owls 27-yard line. Chad Richardson, the quarterback, will keep it. And then pitch it to Perry, and he's at the 33-yard line. Now I want to show you the Dodge, the new Dodge play of the game, brought to you by the new Dodge. You see the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Randy, there have been a lot of plays today that could have been our new Dodge play of the game, but the reverse early in the game involving uh, Wiley here was a great play. And I think it's an excellent play for several reasons. First of all, you get Wiley, a true freshman involved, but this shows you as we talked about, some of these linemen downfield throwing blocks 40, 50 yards downfield. That kind of effort. That kind of, of leadership by your veteran offensive lineman, that's outstanding. For Rice now, second and four at the 33-yard line. Here's Richardson dancing, does a good shoot there, and then gets just popped at the 36-yard line. Gary Berry got a good lick on him, and so does Dan Colson. So at the 36-yard line now, down box moves around. Make it third down and one yard to go. There's Michael Wiley. I know this is our other number five. This is Colson. We got two number fives in there, Randy. It's hard enough to get the dumb thing right when we got all the guys with the same. Give him another number there, will you? No wonder they gave number 45 <laughs> away. They don't have enough numbers as it is. Make him 5B. At the 36-yard line, third and one. Rice hoping to pick up a first down here. Richardson on the pitch. And no first down, but Rice will maintain possession. That was Rod Newhouse, the running back who's in the game, and frankly probably should have had it, but it got away from him. I thought it was a good pitch. It was a well-executed play and a good pitch, and Newhouse, a back that carries the ball a lot, looking upfield maybe before he had the ball secured away, cost Rice the first down because they had it third and short. Looked like Newhouse had a chance to make that. So fourth down, seven yards to go. Here comes Tucker Phillips back into the game to punt it away. And Boston is back. The true freshman for Ohio State, David Boston. This is a huge endo, uh, spiral. And Boston will have running room at his 18-yard line. And puts him to the 28, 10-yard return. Ohio State will have it there. 6.52 remaining from Columbus. It's all the Buckeyes today, 70-7. to seven. Check in at Madison, Wisconsin. Freshman running back Ron Dane gets behind that big offensive line for the Badgers, takes it in for the touchdown. 24-0 Badgers over Eastern Michigan. Let's go back to Columbus with Tim and Randy. Well, it's not that close here. Ohio State all over Rice today, 70-7 to on a marvelous opening performance. If you join us late, Stanley Jackson got his first start at quarterback. He played six series. Not all at the same time, but all six series went for touchdowns. Joe Germain came in. He got him three touchdowns in six tries. And Tom Hoyne just took him for a touchdown. And Tom Hoyne's the quarterback here for the last 6.52 of this football game. 
is Montgomery, who's having a big day in a reserve role, and he's over the 30-yard line. Let's go out to Jim Barber on the sidelines. Jimmy. All right, Tim, since the Buckeyes have already given Wright the slip, now it's time to start thinking about Michigan. These uh, guys are from the Ohio State band. I guess it's never too, uh, never too early to think about the Wolves, huh? Oh, no, it's never too early. From day one, before day one, we're thinking of Michigan. The history of the banana peel. Um, well, this is the uh, Susan Foreman mascot. Um, we always have it. We always have our actual bananas here during the fourth quarter. You know, get the nutrients, everything that uh, big that two players need to, you know, keep marching. And uh, but uh, there's a little unofficial history that uh, they think of us in, back in the '70s when they started this. And uh, you know, they just they just thought of uh, you know some with the banana, and everything like that. But, Super players being bigger and stuff back then, a bunch of gorillas, so. Really? Yeah. Oh, th those are fighting words between Michigan and Ohio State. Oh, yeah. Oh. Fighting, fighting words, man, from, I mean, we use this one suit phone player, preferably a light guy, gets on <laughs> the back of a heavier guy. And we taunt. We taunt the other team, especially Michigan. That's why we use this banana the whole season. All right, guys, we thank you. We thank you for your eloquence. Go enjoy the rest of the game. Back to you, Tim. Well, Joe Montgomery has now carried 13 times for 59 yards. As you look at Stanley Jackson, you know, Randy said, I just want to start one game at quarterback at Ohio State. Now he wants to start another one. You can bet on that. And I think he's going to get his, <laughs> his opportunity with the way he played today. There's a lot of pride by this. We talked earlier about Pelissari and uh, the tears from being named captain and Jackson. His dream was all I want to do was start. There's so much pride by these players. They grow up here. They follow Ohio State. They get a chance to play. That's a, that's a great thing about college sports. Brent Bartholomew's punt to Michael Perry. Fields it about the 17 yard line. That's where he'll get out. So the right downs will have four minutes, 46 seconds remaining in this football game to try to uh, improve their state. And we'll be back with more here from Ohio Stadium at Columbus on Alumni Band Day, the home opener in just a moment. Tim Stout along with Randy Wright and Jim Barber back at Ohio Stadium at Columbus. Well, it's been a while since this game was endowed, and there were some key Buckeye players making their debuts as starters today, especially on offense for Ohio State. Uh, and as you look at uh, some of the big shoes to, to fill some of the newcomers have had, Robert Smith now in the NFL, his first start as a Buckeye, you can see 55 yards. Raymond Harris started with 96. Eddie George, who won the Heisman last year, 90. But today, Pepe Pearson, Randy, 17 carries, 119 yards, and two touchdowns. Not a bad uh, group to be among, and the uh, numbers that follow. Excellent result. A great performance by Pearson. When you're a tailback and you don't get a chance to start until your junior year, you can't afford to start slowly. You have to be able to pick right up where the others have dropped off, and you're not going to get many second and third opportunities. And he's got to be pleased with that. And I think they found themselves a good one-two punch between himself and, and Jackson. Oh, there's no question about it. They got to be so pleased with their execution. But they were a very well-prepared team today. Remember, eight offensive players began today in new position. But they certainly have been able to handle the load today for John Cooper, 59 years old. He's had the best record in the Big Ten the last three years. And he's certainly going to add to that with an impressive start here this afternoon. And second and two now for the Rice Owls. And this play gets stopped before it ever started. Well, there aren't 92,000 here anymore. But there's still a lot of people. They're having fun now, the ones that are here. Game is not in doubt but the fun has just begun. Dead ball, post start, offense. The Rice Owls will fly home after this game. They play at Tulane next Saturday. And then after that, they start getting serious about the Western Athletic Conference. In fact, we'll look at the September schedule for Rice. Their home opener, September 21st, a tough one. They got a tough schedule here, Randy, because Kansas State's good, and Air Force on the road is their tough. But, uh, hey, you go back to practice and you start working on getting better. And they measured themselves today against a great team on the road. Now they know they to, where they have to start from. And they have to be happy with the effort that they got today. There wasn't any quit. And for the most part, they've come out pretty injury-free. Chad Richardson there. First down for the Rice Owls. Ken Hatfield's been through this kind of thing before, and you know his team will bounce back. The Ohio State schedule is somewhat of a different setup emotionally, mentally for the Buckeyes, where they go from here. Next Saturday, they have off. 
And then Pittsburgh comes in here. That could be another game like this one on the 21st. But then the big one at Notre Dame on September 28th. Now, I got some news for the Fighting Irish. You better have some speed to cover these guys because this Ohio State team is so quick. And then, of course, Penn State comes in here, and that's the Big Ten opener. Man, there's some great games coming up this fall. We hope you'll enjoy them on Creative Sports here in the Big Ten. Blue, Magoo, over. 313 remaining to be played here in Columbus, Ohio. Chad Richardson is the backup quarterback for the Rice Owls. Did a nice job coming in here as a true freshman. And didn't start, didn't play much at all in the first half, but has had a chance to play a lot more in the second half. And I think they're very, very excited about the things that he brings to this offense. Well, it's a quiet scene in here now, but when you think over the 75 years of this edifice, the marvelous moment. Hey, Randy's Wisconsin team came in here 14 years ago and beat the Bucks 6-0. So uh, it's, uh, it's quite an experience to play in here. You've got a good memory. Well, uh, you know, it's rare that Ohio State loses at home. And, uh, hey, the Badgers uh, shut out Ohio State that day. Of course, Randy played quarterback. <laughs> but they only scored six points. But the, that's all you needed, you know? It's either a W or an L. Nebraska's now beat Michigan State 55 to 14. Iowa's leading Arizona 21-20. I guess Nebraska's still got a few players left. I think Michigan State is a much improved football team, but Nebraska, much like Ohio State, they just keep getting better and better and better. 235, clock running here. Third down, five to go now for the Owls. Richardson again with a spread back offense. This play is probably going to be a free when the Buckeyes may be offside. And we got now it's, it's flag day. Uh, they're everywhere. Uh, Today's Big Ten football is brought to you by Amico. You expect more from a leader. By Discus Athletic Activewear. Discus Athletic, the one thing to wear for every sport. The new Dodge. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. And by Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Buckeyes had their Wheaties today, boy, and they needed them to run up and down the field the way they have for well over 600 yards in this game. And uh, I think anybody with a scarlet and gray jersey has been in this one, as well as those for the right towel. That's one thing about a blowout. Everybody gets to play, both sides. Ball is at the 47 now. First down, Rice on that penalty against the Buckeyes. They would like, of course, to get in here again if they could. Richardson's going to play action a bit, throw downfield. His man covered. Now he gets open a little bit, but it's just a little bit overthrown. That was close for Thad Bridges, but he couldn't quite catch up. Really a nice pass that time by Richardson. Put a lot of air underneath it, and it looked as though Bridges maybe didn't adjust to it as well. Perfect pass away from the defender. Bridges reached out, didn't quite pull it in though. Well, Randy, I've enjoyed working with you today. So you got Penn State, Northern Illinois next week. Penn State, Northern Illinois, and then we got Penn State actually yeah. a couple weeks. There we go, that's next Saturday. Greg Scott, Greg reads our minds. Northern Illinois at number seven, but there's another incredibly good team playing at home, big stadium, big crowd, big Boy, tradition. They look good in their opener against Southern Cal. Yeah. So it'll be tough for Northern Illinois, but uh, again, they'll see where they stack up against that. We'll take a look at Curtinus again next Saturday. Oh, oh, golly, it's it's got hit. And the fumble, the ball is down. And just, please get up, and he is getting up. I don't know what that'll look like on a slow-mo replay, but he'll be happy that he can get up after that. Buckeyes have the ball with 2.07 to play. We'll call a timeout here with 2.07 remaining. Time out on the field. Buckeyes get one more chance, leading 70 to 7. There's a bit more to go. We're coming right back. 14 Nebraska over Michigan State. Let's go back to Columbus. Where the Buckeyes and the Rice Owls are putting the final touches on this one this afternoon. That was Charlie Sanders for Ohio State caught in the backfield. And this is one where they'll probably just let the clock run here, Randy. I think you're right, just with a minute 40, a little over that to go, just trying to safely run it out and get out of here without any more injuries. So Ohio State's uh, number nine rating in the Associated Press poll this week stands the possibility of moving up, certainly. 134, second and 14 now. Sure looks better than the number nine team today. Oh, man, I'll tell you, they sure did. Last year they started the rankings, but I think it's 10th and 12th. Yes, Montgomery uh, ducking inside. 
about the fifth string running back. He's going to end up with about 70 yards by the time it's all said and done. And going out of bounds, that stopped the clock and gives Ohio State still another first down. Well, as, as we just alluded to, Ohio State, I think, started the season last year ranked 10th in one of the polls, plus in the other, and wound up going all the way to second before the last game of the season. Very similar today with a very similar result offensively. A lot of points, very explosive. Tommy Hoy, well, I'm not sure he thought he was going to play today. Certainly not quarterback, as uh, Jim Barber said on the sideline. He pulled up all summer to play in, but things change in football. And injuries caused them to send him back. Here's Montgomery again, and there's just no place to go at that time. Right hanging in there now. We're down to a minute 11 to play. This game was 28 to 7, 28 nothing, and Rice scored. It was 28 to 7 with three and a half minutes to go in a half. And then the Buckeyes hit two big plays. Had it been 28 to 7 at half, Rice wouldn't have won the game, but they would have been closer. Okay, they'd have been a little bit more into it. And then the Buckeyes, with their speed, hit two huge plays to the freshman, and that made it 42 to 7 at the half. And then it <laughs> went from bad to worse. And then they just came out in the second <laughs> half, and, and Rice, although they tried, they just certainly did not have the manpower. Fourth down now for the Buckeyes. This is probably their last offensive play of the day if they don't pick up the first down here. And Montgomery again, who turned out to be a workhorse in mop-up duty. He is close to a first down. And they'll stop the clock and see. So Joe Montgomery, uh, 16 carries before that one for 64 yards. I mean, the Buckeyes have had just all kinds of guys contribute to this one today. The ball is short. It goes over, and Rice will have 27 seconds. And so John Cooper is still undefeated in his opening game, 9-0, after his team rolled here today. We'll come back and finish this one up in Columbus in just a moment. It's been all Ohio State this afternoon. Enough with the Buckeyes and Rice. Yeah, there's just uh, right now 27 seconds to go on a timeout. The Rice Owls here will maybe snap the ball one more time, and then they'll fly home and get ready to prepare for the Tulane Green Wave next week in New Orleans. And the Buckeyes have the week off. And uh, that's all they need is a week to get better. A week to get better. That'll get them better prepared for Pittsburgh. So this could be the last snap of the game. Chad Richardson, the quarterback, he took over for Chad Nelson for most of the second half today. This is Michael George through the middle. He's going to end it with a big play. A good run, certainly. That'll stop the clock. It's the first down. Good run in there by Michael Perry. And Perry gets out over the 40-yard line. And so they'll reset the clock here. 20 seconds, first down, Rice at the 42-yard line. Hope you've enjoyed this game. You have if you're an Ohio State fan. There's no question about it. And for the rest of the Big Ten viewers, well, you got to deal with the Buckeyes this year because they look that tough. The road will get tougher for them, certainly, but this guy right here, Stanley Jackson, off to a very impressive start today. Six series, he played quarterback. All six series went for touchdown. That's Kilon Gordon, and that's going to do it. That's the end of the football game. The Ohio State Buckeyes score the most points they've ever scored in 15 years behind their junior quarterback, Stanley Jackson. Hope you've enjoyed this one this afternoon. The final score from Columbus is Ohio State 70 and Rice 7. Want to thank all of you for joining us today. 70 to 7, the Ohio State Buckeyes coming in ranked number 10 on the CNN poll over right 70 to 7. Next Saturday, it's another big Big Ten game here on Creative Sports. Northern Illinois will be at...